can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 701, The Difficulty of Zhong Yi's Questions. Sunday. The next morning. The day before the deadline for the submission of the exam questions, everyone woke up and ate the breakfast delivered to them. Every team's question setters were called to a meeting by their respective team chiefs to begin another day of work, to compile and summarize everyone's questions, then analyze and discuss it as a group. Mathematics team. Dean Pan. Oh, you're here? Everyone has arrived. Ah, uh, Teacher Jong is not here yet. You haven't seen him since yesterday? That's right, I did not see Professor Jong since the night before yesterday. I think he stayed in his dorm the entire time, then I heard he went to get more information and passed exams. The deadline's tomorrow, so we have to finish the rough draft of the mathematics exam today, or else it'll be too late. Get someone to call for Professor Jong. All right, I'll go. Right at this moment, Zhong Yi walked into the office from outside. Dean Pan looked over. We were just going to get you. So how is it? Zhong Yi came in with a stack of documents. It's more or less done. How's the difficulty of the questions? Dean Pan asked immediately with great interest. He truly intended to utterly depend on Zhong Yi's help this time for the mathematics exam. Although Pan Yang was one of the supervisors of the mathematics team, his expertise did not really lie in the area of algebraic geometry at the high school level. Everyone gathered around them as well. Zhong Yi said, the difficulty should be good enough. Didn't you tell me that the more difficult it is, the better? Yes, it'd be good if it's more difficult. Dean Pan said, we already have a lot of, of questions that are just moderately difficult, so we don't need to come up with any more of those. What we're lacking are the extremely difficult ones, so let me take a look at what you have. Zhong Yi passed the documents over to him. There's multiple choice, fill in the blank, and short answer, all of which I've proposed quite a number of. Why don't you all go through them first? I still have more if they're not suitable. A person said, Professor Zhong's really efficient. A middle-aged man said, I want to see what you've got there too. They pulled a whiteboard over. Then Zhong Yi's questions were placed on it and held up with a magnet while everyone gathered around the whiteboard to take a look. They scanned it once over from the first question to the last, all the way down. Finally, when they finished reading the last question, all of the teachers from the mathematics team were stunned for a while. This. Man. Ah. This question. Let me do some calculations for it. This isn't right. This is not a question for high school students at all. This requires an advanced math formula that will only be learned in university to solve, no. It even uses a formula that will only be taught in the second year of university. Why is there even calculus in this? This question won't do. Next to them, a female teacher went to a whiteboard and began solving the problem. She used a total of three minutes to solve the problem. It was very fast because the problem was not difficult to her at all, but the problem-solving process required used at least two formulas that weren't taught in high school textbooks. Putting down the marker, the female teacher said, this is not something that a high school student can solve at all. After staring at the problem and solution for a long time, Dean Pan looked at Zhong Yi. Teacher Zhong? Zhong Yi laughed. The problems I have proposed are all solvable through the knowledge found in high school textbooks. None of them exceed the scope of a high school exam. This problem might look difficult and complicated when you read it at first. I see that this teacher used several formulas to solve the question just now, even using higher mathematics formulas, but it's actually not necessary at all. He picked up the marker and started writing on the whiteboard. If you adjust your mindset first before attempting to solve the question, you would not be tricked by it. The actual, correct, and most simple way to solve this is to start from here. If you bring this specification over here to the front, then it would become simplified and you can then apply this calculation, like this, like this. He put down the marker. The answer can be derived easily this way. When everyone from the mathematics team saw this, their jaws dropped. Easy? Easy your sister. This problem was way too tricky. After they knew about the problem-solving process, it did not look difficult anymore. Indeed, even though they could use algebraic geometry knowledge to solve it, 
it was almost impossible for anyone to have that train of thought for the solution when faced with such a question. Even this group of math teachers did not figure it out at the start. Let alone the students. Dean Pan laughed. This problem is interesting. That female teacher wiped the sweat off her forehead. How many high school students can possibly solve the problem with that kind of thought process? The way I look at it, at least 99% of the examinees will be stumble at this question. John Yi said, that might not necessarily be true. Even if this problem-solving process is not easy to think of, there are still at least two other ways using normal methods to solve it. He wrote out another two solutions on the whiteboard using high school algebraic geometry formulas which could be used to solve the question, even if the process was more complex and needed constant calculation and application of formulas. The teachers of the mathematics team were all convinced after seeing the solutions written out by John Yi. Dean Pan decided, this problem is good. It's different from all the problems we've ever had in our Beijing college entrance mathematics exams. Let's see the next problem then. The next one was a multiple choice question. This was an extremely tricky question and if there was just a lapse in concentration, the examinees would be deceived by the four given answer choices and make unnecessary assumptions about the question. Even if they used the wrong answer that they derived in the first place to work backwards, the answer would still stand, which made it even trickier. Among the question setters of the mathematics team, when they were all studying this question, there was one of them who got the answer wrong due to being misled by one of the wrong multiple choice answers. When he finally found out what the correct answer was, the teacher who answered wrong face palmed and coughed, flushing with embarrassment. He even wished for a hole to open up so that he could crawl in and hide. It wasn't that he wasn't smart, but rather he had a lapse in concentration and subconsciously fell for the trick question. This question was wicked. Professor Zhang understood too well the mindset of the examinees and had purposely set this trap for them. If it was in accordance with how other mathematics multiple choice questions were solved, then there would be 5 out of 10 examinees falling for this trap. The third question was similar. The fourth question. The fifth question. The tenth question. One by one, the questions were discussed and attempted. The more times the teachers from the mathematics team attempted the proposed questions, the more frightened and depressed they felt. There were even some questions that left them with a lingering sense of a headache when they attempted to solve it. But the more they felt this way, the more they were convinced by Zhong Yi's ability. After going through the last question, Dean Pan looked at Zhong Yi and couldn't help but smile. If I was given such an exam 30 years ago during my high school days, don't even mention getting full marks, if I could pass, I would thank the heavens for sure. The other teachers laughed at Dean Pan's exaggerated comparison, but they truly had a similar reaction to it as well. These questions were all too insane. This wasn't even a question of difficulty anymore. Many of the questions were just goddamn traps laid for the examinees. A female teacher didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Isn't this too difficult? Dean Pan smiled and said, I think it's appropriate enough. Since the higher-ups want a reform and are calling for an increase in the difficulty of the mathematics exam section, then these questions by teacher Jong are obviously the most suitable to help achieve that. Someone said, we're going ahead with them. Yes, we are. Dean Pan decided and approved. A young mathematics teacher wearing a complicated expression said, when the examinees see this exam, they will definitely be cursing all 18 generations of ancestors of the question-setting team. Another teacher laughed loudly. That doesn't matter. The difficult ones have all been proposed by Professor Zhong. We were only responsible for the easy ones. Zhong Yi said, so you're all putting the blame on me now. Finally, after another round of deliberation, the first edition of the mathematics exam was roughly confirmed. Zhong Yi was not going to bother with the remaining work left to be done and just let Dean Pan and the others handle it. Zhong Yi excused himself and headed to the Chinese literature team with another set of documents. At 10 a.m. in the morning. Over at the Chinese literature team, a fervent discussion was also taking place. But this question is very good. The board says that it's too traditional and not innovative enough. I've already changed the style, so it's no longer a traditional type of question anymore. That won't do, Chief Yu has rejected it. It's the same for those questions of mine, none of them pass, so I will have to start all over again. Hi, 
I don't think we'll be able to make it on time. The board is asking for too much this time. The door opened and Zhong Yi walked in straight away without knocking. Is Chief Yu around? Seeing him arrive, Su Ene said, Teacher Zhong, you're here? Let me get him for you. She knocked on the office door. Chief Yu, Zhong Yi is here. Chief Yu came out of his office. How's the question writing going? Zhong Yi said, All done. Chief Yu immediately said, Good. Everyone, let's study these questions. Su Ene was the most curious about the questions and quickly took the papers from Zhong Yi's hand to pin them to the whiteboard. When Liao Qi, Li Rui, Ma Qi, and the other Chinese literature team teachers saw, they came strolling over as well. A few of the teachers did not seem to care too much, as they had always been biased against Zhong Yi and did not like or appreciate him much, feeling that his abilities had been over-exaggerated too much by everyone else. However, when they laid eyes on the first question, those teachers looked like they nearly vomited blood. Su Ene burst out into laughter. Chief Yu stayed quiet and did not say a word for a long time. Liao Qi. Li Rui. Ma Qi. Then at the second question, everyone vomited blood. The questions Zhong Yi had written out were questions they had never come across before. They weren't even things they had ever even thought of. All the questions could be described as totally unexpected, yet when they carefully thought about them, the meanings behind those questions were very interesting. Zhong Yi went forward and gave a simple explanation of his questions' answers and thought processes. The first question's answer is a little more flexible. It's mainly to test the examinee's thought, logic, and values. If the answer is logical and the arguments are valid and in a positive light, then we can give full marks for it. Next, we have the second question. One by one, he explained all of the questions to the teachers. After that, Zhong Yi made an excuse that he had something else to attend to and left. He did not stay longer than necessary at the Chinese literature team, as he knew that a few of the people there did not have good opinions of him, so he didn't want to bother with them either. In the Chinese literature team, he wasn't the lead question setter and did not have much say. Therefore, after he supplied them with the questions, he just handed them over to Chief Yu to let him make the final decision. After he left, the Chinese literature question setting team turned silent. At this moment, everyone had actually wanted to shout, F asterisk asterisk K. Are these even high school level questions? Can it get any more wondrous than this? Chapter 702, Celebratory Feast. Monday. Everyone from the Beijing College Entrance Examinations question setting team felt that the sense of burden had been lifted from them. Finally, everything is settled. Phew, it hasn't been easy. It's finally over. We can finally rest for the next few days. I'm going to sleep well tomorrow. This year's question setting work was too difficult. I wouldn't want to come back to next year's question setting team. It's been so tiring that I haven't slept soundly for the past week now. Anyway, our work is done here and we can finally relax. Yes, we only have to wait for the college entrance exam to finish. We're free at last. Today was the day of the deadline. Every question setting team had already submitted their tasks requirements. The main, supplementary, and some backup questions which were not selected were all sorted and submitted to the higher-ups by the supervisors. At this point, this year's Beijing exams were basically confirmed with the remaining task of selecting the questions, and some detailed adjustments left to the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board. The Higher Education Entrance Examination Board and the higher-ups would decide which of the questions were suitable for use and which were not. Essentially, the remaining work would no longer involve the question-setting teachers as their jobs were already completed. From this point forward, the time remaining would count as their off days. Until the college entrance exam was over, they would not be allowed to return home. On the hill. Zhong Yi and Su Na were taking a morning jog. Su Ene was dressed in her sports attire with a towel hanging off her shoulder. She was already sweating all over while Zhong Yi was in a better condition, not feeling tired yet. After running for a while already, he was still not short on breath yet. I can't take it, I can't take it anymore. I have to walk from here. Su Ene stopped and was unable to run anymore. Teacher Zhong, you've got really good stamina. Zhong Yi also slowed down his pace. I'm doing worse than before. 
In the past, I'd always trained and gone for my morning exercise regularly. But now I can't do that since I'm always cooped up at work. I can only run a few laps to relax when I've used too much of my brain at work. His stamina was not exactly good either, but at least it was still better than Su Na who did not train frequently. After all, Zhong Yi was armed with some martial arts although it was still at a level where it only worked randomly and at given times. Su Na smiled as she wiped her sweat away and asked, how have you been doing recently? Zhong Yi smiled and said, it's been the usual stuff. I'm just doing TV shows which is my original profession. Su Na said in amusement, what original profession? I'm not even certain what your original profession is anymore. Math, literature, music, radio, television, which profession haven't you dabbled in? So which one of those is your original profession? If you didn't mention it, I would already have forgotten what your real profession is. Besides, you're amazing no matter which field you go into. You always manage to shine and thrive. John Yi bragged, heh, I may not have any strong points, but I'm really good at adapting. Su Na said, I seriously never expected you to be approached by the college entrance exam team this time. I suppose there are many people who also weren't prepared for it. If this is the signal the education system is sending out, then does that mean you're likely to return to Peking University this year? They can't keep you suspended for too long. There are still many Peking University students asking about you, haha. Not to mention the other examples, but just on Peking University's official forum alone. The students have made known their intentions more than once, hoping that you will resume your duties again. Is that so? Zhong Yi was very pleased. So the students still remember me? Su Na suddenly changed her tone. However, there are still some students boycotting you. Zhong Yi was baffled. Ha! Huh? Su Na blinked and laughed. You didn't know about that, right? When I got up this morning, I met some people sent by the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board. One of them was a university classmate of mine. During breakfast, I learned from him during our chat that you have already became a public enemy on the internet. Do you know which group is boycotting you this time? It's this year's Beijing examinees and their parents. They're all calling for the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board to dismiss and send you home. On any forum and on Weibo posts related to the topic of the college entrance exam in Beijing, there's even an operation called, Send John Yi Home, going on. According to my sources, not only are there beautiful women lining up to take a shower in your house, there is also plenty of cash in your bedroom and an ancient tomb of the Tang dynasty was even discovered in it. All these things were said just to make you go home quickly to take a look. After I heard that from my classmate, I nearly died laughing. Your house is the subject of all verbal attacks online now. Zhong Yi nearly fainted when he heard about the situation in the outside world. What the hell is going on? Why are they boycotting me? Has this bro become a specialist in being boycotted that something like this would happen every few days? Su Na said, who asked you to present those wondrous elementary math problems in the past? The examinees are afraid that you will make the questions too difficult, so they started this movement and are totally enjoying themselves. Everyone from the examinees to their parents, and even your own fans, are happily and tirelessly smearing your name, ha ha. Zhong Yi became even more speechless, but then boasted without shame, after this bro entered the entertainment industry, I've always walked the path of a male idol, but why is it now becoming more and more like the path of a comedian? Su Na. The two of them chatted casually as they walked to the halfway point on the hillside. The moment they reached the entrance to the dorms, they bumped into Dean Pan. Teacher Zhong, Little Su, both of you went for a jog? Pan Yang waved at them. Su Na said, yes, Dean Pan. Have you eaten yet? Pan Yang smiled and said, not yet, I'm saving my appetite for this afternoon. Oh right, the both of you should get ready as well, so quickly shower and get changed. There will be a celebratory feast at the hilltop at 11 a.m. Everyone will gather to eat. Tentatively, it'll be an outdoor barbecue as the weather is quite nice today. It's cloudy and not too warm. Su Na asked, is it organized by the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board? Pan Yang said, no, it's our teachers who are organizing it. We do the same thing every year. It's already considered a standard event here. There will be a list of whatever ingredients need to be purchased.
and some staff from the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board will head out to buy them for us. If you need anything, you can let them know and give them a list. Zhong Yi smiled and said, sure. Su Na said, I feel like drinking some ice soda water right now. That will definitely be included. Dean Pan said, there are also some programs like singing or dancing. Whoever wants to participate can get ready beforehand. Don't be late. Su Na said, we will definitely be on time. It was not even 9 a.m. yet, but some people were already at the top of the hill. However, Zhong Yi was not in a hurry as it was still quite early at the moment. After he had showered and changed into casual wear, he headed to building one. Without any internet connection or his cell phone, the only free time activity left was reading. There was a library which had many books that covered many subjects such as literature, history, social science, and many other extracurricular books as well. The book collection in the library was not only limited to the scope of the college entrance exam. There was no one inside as all their work had already been completed. Everyone had left and no one was borrowing any books or researching for information inside the library anymore. He closed the door, turned on the air conditioning, and sat down. Without choosing a specific type of book, he took a random one and read through it. Well, to be accurate, the word read was not a good description for it. He was like a machine flipping through the pages at a very fast speed. He would only take one second to glance at a page, capture all the words on it, and then move on to the next page. This reading speed would have left anyone stunned. Catalogue of Song Dynasty Famous Figures Algebraic Geometry Exercises The History of Music Weichi for Beginners Portuguese for Dummies, Part 1 And so on. It had everything you could name. The books he read were not determined by his interests but rather just whatever he was able to get his hands on. It was totally random and unrestricted. After flipping through about 20 books, Zhong Yi stopped. He then quietly opened the game ring to take a look at the huge amount of reputation points, which the voice had given him with its previous two episodes. After that, he immediately tapped into the merchant shop and spent 10 million reputation points, to purchase 100 memory search capsules all at once. After consuming a capsule, his mind quickly recalled the contents from the first book he flipped through, storing all the knowledge into his mind, book by book. Previously, Zhong Yi had always used the memory search capsules to recall the knowledge from his previous world. But now he knew that this was no longer enough. For example, this incident of him not knowing when the college entrance exam was held had sounded an alarm for Zhong Yi. He was still too unfamiliar with this new world. After all, the two worlds were not the same. There were many differences like when the college entrance exam was held, the contents of the textbooks, as well as many other aspects. If he still based his behavior on the knowledge and train of thought from his previous world, he would definitely have problems with a lot of situations. That was the reason why Zhong Yi had planned on finding time to gain a deeper understanding of this world. Other than these slight differences between the two worlds, most other things were essentially the same. Actually, the knowledge Zhong Yi did not have a chance to learn in his previous world could totally be learned in this world. There was no way that he could read the books from his previous world or return to it anymore, but this world also had those books. Zhong Yi quickly went through all the related books or video resources and used the memory search capsules to memorize them, achieving a crazy fast learning speed. It was still many days from the start of the college entrance exam. He could not go anywhere other than stay within the boundaries of the private location in the hills. With such plentiful time, it was apparent that this was the most suitable time to do this. Time should not be wasted. There were still plenty of things to learn about. One book. Three books. Five books. In the blink of an eye, Zhong Yi had already etched the contents of five books deep inside his mind. He even could recite them backwards comfortably as all the information was easily retrievable. Of course, a huge amount of memory search capsule was needed for this and had to be supported by an enormous amount of reputation points. Thankfully Zhong Yi's new show contributed even more reputation points that allowed him to use them constantly. Zhong Yi did not feel pained after spending tens of millions of reputation points as they would be useless if left untouched. It was a different case for gaining knowledge. After comparison there was nothing to feel heartbroken about. 
Furthermore, The Voice has only aired for two episodes. After the later episodes were broadcast, there would be even more reputation points coming in so he could stand this round of huge spending. That was why the most important thing for Zhong Yi now was to enrich himself and arm himself. Knowledge was power and also a bridge connected to his goal of becoming an A-list celebrity. What he was doing now was setting a foundation to prepare himself to reach higher heights. Six books. Ten books. Looking at his watch, he realized that it was almost time. Only then did Zhong Yi leisurely stroll toward the hilltop to join the celebratory feast that everyone had organized. He was ready to pig out. Chapter 703, The Teacher's Friendly Contest? Later in the morning. 11 a.m. The sky above the hilltop was scattered with clouds and some of the thicker clouds were floating past harmoniously, blocking off the hot sun which was shining directly overhead. With the addition of the dense shade at the hilltop created by the trees and a cool breeze sweeping through the wilderness, it felt very comfortable. At this moment, the hilltop was full of teachers. Dr. Chen, you came too. Yo, is everything prepared? Where's the bacon? Where did you put the bacon? In the second drawer of the cooler. Be careful when you open it, there are ice cubes in there. Let's light the charcoal. Wait a moment, not everyone is here yet. Ha ha, my stomach is already growling in hunger. Can any of you male teachers come and help us move the grill? I'm coming. The barbecue grill and food were all set and ready for cooking. Zhong Yi was accompanied by two young teachers from the mathematics team as they walked up to the hilltop together. When they saw this scene, their mood became better seeing this lively atmosphere. Looking at the amount of food, their fatigue from the past few days seemed to disappear into thin air. They were just waiting to tuck in now. Not far away, Su Na was drinking a soda and chatting with a few other female teachers beside her. Many of the other male teachers had already opened a crate of beer and started drinking. For the past few days, the teachers were not allowed to even take a sip of any alcoholic drinks, but it didn't matter anymore now. Professor Zhong, we're over here. Right here. Many teachers from the mathematics team were seated under a pavilion. When they saw Zhong Yi arriving together with some of their colleagues, they called them over. Someone said, Teacher Zhong, I heard that the Beijing examinees are undermining you. A female mathematics teacher covered her mouth while laughing. I also heard from someone at the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board that the examinees have caused quite a big commotion. When Zhong Yi heard this, he said in a depressed tone, Hi, don't mention that. Tell me. What have I done to offend anyone? This bro has somehow offended a large number of people again this time. What did I do to deserve this? A teacher from the science team standing outside the pavilion heard that. He turned his head and asked, the science exams are presented as rather difficult, don't tell me your mathematics team has set very difficult questions too. A math teacher smiled and said, it's not just very difficult. Later you will know when you see it, especially those questions set by teacher Zhong. Every one of them was trickier than the last. That person. About ten minutes later, the last wave of teachers who hadn't arrived yet reached the hilltop. Among them was Dean Pan of the mathematics team. But Chief Yu, the supervisor of the Chinese literature team, could not be seen, probably because something had come up and he could not come. Immediately, the hilltop was surrounded with smoke. Barbecue grills and charcoal fires were lighted everywhere. There were an estimated seven barbecue grills and were enough for these dozens of teachers to grill the food. The food was also abundant and could even last for the entire day of barbecuing. Almost everyone is here. Let's start grilling. Come on, come on. Let's grill the scallops first. The hot weather will easily spoil them. Please grill some big shrimp for me, thank you. Some of the male teachers volunteered and started getting busy in front of the grills. Not long after, the food was cooking on the grills, and the buzzing sound of the fat cooking emanated a fragrance that drifted everywhere. At this point, a middle-aged male teacher from Tsinghua University suddenly announced loudly, My fellow comrades, after working for so many days, our work is finally complete. From now on, we have nothing to worry about, so let's have a good time together. I suggest that we go by the old rules. A female teacher smiled and said, OK. Another, slightly plump female teacher also said, I agree. 
A teacher from the Chinese literature team said, seconded. A teacher from the arts team said, ha ha, no problem. Many of them were regulars of the Beijing College Entrance Examinations Question Setting Team. Some of them had even participated in the question setting team for the past seven or eight years. Except for a few new faces who joined this year, like Zhang Yi, Su Na, and some of those younger teachers, the others were all very familiar with the old rules that Tsinghua University teacher had just mentioned. Don't think that these authoritative people of the education world who could easily send shivers down their students' spines with just their stares alone were stereotypically rigid people. They would throw up too if they drank too much. Similarly, if they overworked, they would find a chance to relax. Zhang Yi was unsure, so he asked Pan Yang who was beside him, Dean Pan, what old rules are they talking about? Pan Yang chuckled. It's not too interesting if everyone just ate and did nothing. I forgot which year it started, but during the celebratory feast after every question setting, we organized some activities like a performance, singing, or calligraphy. We split the teachers into different teams and whoever loses is punished by drinking alcohol or taking on other penalties. Zhong Yi nodded. I see. A middle-aged mathematics teacher said happily, every year, this segment is always interesting and something to look forward to. However, Zhong Yi did not seem interested. This fellow had only been staring hungrily at the barbecue grill all this while. Everyone began to discuss. Voices chattered. How do we split the teams this year? For the past few years, it was always the arts teachers in a team and science teachers in the other. But then there isn't much suspense in the contest this way. The science teachers are bad when it comes to literary activities, so it has always been the arts teachers coming out on top every year. He, we science teachers have also won before, all right? Ha ha, only once or twice. Old Jew, you can still remember that? That was still our victory. Besides, many of you people from the arts are well versed in literature, dancing, writing, and drawing. Is there any honor in beating our teachers from the sciences? Let's be serious now, how should we split the teams this year then? If we don't split the teams according to the sciences and arts, surely we can't split them according to schools, right? There will be too many teams like Tsinghua, Peking, Renmin, and Beijing Normal University. It won't be easy to manage so many teams. Why don't we group them according to gender? Oh, right. That's a good suggestion. Sounds good to me. It'll be quite interesting if the two genders compete against each other. What will the penalty be if a team loses? The loser will have to drink since there's so much beer around. Good. It's settled then? Yes, it's settled. Come on, who's afraid of whom? Isolated in the hills, everyone's passion for self-entertainment was many times greater than usual. It didn't matter if they were young teachers or older comrades, everyone were quite cooperative. Very quickly, all the teachers unanimously agreed with this proposal of splitting the teams. Everyone immediately stood with their camps, one side with all the male teachers and the other with the female teachers. When they were all with their group, there were obviously fewer people in the female teachers' team. They were only about two-thirds the number of the male teachers' team. A female teacher disagreed with this, that won't do, we have too few people. Su Na also giggled. That's right, us women already aren't good drinkers, and yet we have less people on our team. It's too unfair. Liao Qi from the Chinese literature team said, then how do you recommend we solve this? A middle-aged female teacher suggested, give us a teacher from your side who can at least drink on our behalf. After some discussing, the male teachers did not have any objections as it was only for entertainment anyway. All right, pick a person, only one person. Hearing that, the female teachers immediately started whispering to each other. Many of the male teachers also straightened their backs in hopes that the female teachers would choose them. Being the only man in a group of women would also be a sign of popularity. Even if they had to drink on behalf of the female teachers if their team lost, it would be okay. The female teachers were discussing while pointing fingers at them. What about teacher Chu? He's not bad. How about teacher Wu? He's a good one too. Aya, who should we choose? We have to get someone who can drink a lot. Or find someone who can help us to win, ha ha. Zhang Yi's enthusiasm for the activities was close to nil. 
this guy had already moved away from the groups and walked over to the barbecue grill by himself. On seeing the scallops were cooked, he scooped them up and started eating. At times, he would blow on his fingers as the food was too hot. The taste was acceptable. All that was missing was just some garlic paste. Suddenly, a female professor of Renmin University took the lead and stood up. We've made our decision. Liao Qi asked, who will be joining your team? The male teachers all turned their attention to them and perked up their ears. That female professor smiled for a bit and said, let's welcome teacher Zhong Yi to our team. When he heard his name being mentioned, Zhong Yi, who was just taking a big bite of some meat next to the grill, turned his head with a shocked expression. Ah? Liao Qi's eyebrows twitched. Are you sure? The female professor smiled and said, yes, I'm sure. Pan Yang said, Professor Zhong, stop eating for now. You've just been given an arduous duty. Su Na also waved at him to call him over. Teacher Zhong, come over quickly. A female teacher said, Haha, with Zhong Yi here, at least we won't lose in the field of literature. Besides, even if the male teacher's team plays dirty and comes up with some math questions or brain teasers, we still have a 100% chance of winning. As for the remaining areas like competing at singing or dancing, those are all our forte. We aren't afraid of anyone. Among the female teachers, they were mainly comprised of English teachers, history teachers, political science teachers, and geography teachers. A female doctorate professor said, Teacher Zhong, it's all on you now. Is your alcohol tolerance good? Zhong Yi said helplessly, I'm the type who goes down after just a glass. You'd have to carry me down the hill if I get drunk. Su Na exposed him, save your excuses, when have you ever held back when it comes to drinking? Surely you can down at least two bottles of beer, right? Teacher Zhong, we're a group of women here, so you better not let us down. Once he was with the group of women, many of the female teachers started chatting with Zhong Yi. Little Zhong, I'm Sun Fang from Beijing Normal. Ari, Sis Sunday. I've a favor to ask of you. Please speak. Can you help me get Zhong Yu Enches and Fan Wenli's autographs? My children like them both very much. Aren't you their leader now? Man, I'm not their leader. I'm only an executive director and they will only take my instruction while filming the program. It's different once we're off stage. But no problem, I'll get them for you. Let's exchange phone numbers and I'll get someone to bring it to you. Teacher Zhong, I want them too. Yes, me too. I don't need their autographs, but Professor Zhong, could you help sign 10 of your own autographs for me instead? After you become an A-list celebrity, I will open an online shop to sell your autographs. Seeing that Zhong Yi was so popular with them, the male teachers did not feel too surprised at all. The most well-known person in the team of teachers was Zhong Yi. Not only was he reputable in academics, but even without his reputation as a famed mathematician, Zhong Yi was also one of the hottest B-list celebrities in the country. Many of the female teachers probably couldn't name some of the male teachers, but all of them definitely knew Zhong Yi. Except for some teachers from the Chinese literature team who had doubts about Zhong Yi and those who disliked him on Chinese literature matters, the majority of the other teachers were not prejudiced against him. Naturally, the only person who would receive unanimous votes from the female teachers would be him alone. Chapter 704, A Poetry Duel? The contest began. As they ate, everyone was happily engaging in each other with a competitive spirit. The topic of the contest hadn't been decided yet, but the male and female teacher teams were already starting to snatch things from each other. Don't take that from me. That's ours, ha ha. Put down that chicken wing of mine. Damn, I barbecued that, since when did it become yours? We can't beat them. Teacher Zhong, come and help us, quick. Don't you all know about ladies first? Wow, the scallops are delicious, so delicious. Finally, the group divided into two teams, with one team standing in front of the barbecue pit towards the northern side, while the other team stood on the opposite side. The two teams drew a clear boundary from each other, not showing any weakness. Although it was just a friendly contest to relax from the tense work they were dealing with before, both parties were aiming to win. Everyone had a strong sense of team spirit and honor, well, except for Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi basically did not have any interest at all for this sort of contest. 
Zhong Yi wasn't bothered by anything and was only concerned with eating. In his position as the only man in the group of women, his only duty was to drink should their team lose. Nothing else mattered to him. Come on. Don't steal food anymore, it's time to compete. Which side gets to decide the topic first? Let the ladies do it first. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and set the topic. The usual rules apply. We'll have three judges to decide who wins or loses. In the end, three teachers volunteered to be the judges without needing to be chosen. The judges' team was made up of the Chinese literature team's Li Rui, a male teacher from a foreign language school, and an almost retired professor who was previously from Tsinghua University who looked to be around 60. The judges got ready. The female teachers huddled together to discuss and then came up with the first topic, the first topic will be last letter with song lyrics. Everyone will sing a line from a song and the next person must use the last word of the song to begin the next line. This was a traditional game they'd always had and something they always played. It was also the game the female teachers were best at. 1. The male teachers did not lose their morale. That's fine. Come on. Last letter with song lyrics began. The first female teacher to sing a line was Sue N.A. When will the moon be clear and bright? The male teacher's team sent a young history teacher to the front. Bright heart of mind suddenly awash by the downpour. A cheerful-looking teacher from the female teacher's team continued on from their word. Downpour of confusion conspire to leave me lost. With a line coming from each side, the teams were evenly matched. When the game was heating to the stage of becoming white hot, the victory came as a surprise when someone from the female teacher's team sang a line of lyrics ending with the word, kill. There were almost no songs that had lyrics beginning with this word, leaving the male teacher who was next in line hesitating for a long time and unable to come up with a line. After five seconds, the three judges announced that the female teacher's team won. The female teachers scored the first victory and high-fived each other in celebration. We won. He he, it's too easy. Teacher Chu secured the victory. Drink, drink, drink. Losers, admit your defeat. The male teacher who did not manage to come up with the line to carry on the game took a bottle of beer with a saddened expression and chugged it down. He took great effort to finish it, clearly showing that he wasn't much of a drinker at all. After he finished it and with the alcohol kicking in, he said in a very upbeat manner, the next round's topic will be decided by us. Our topic will be the imitation game. From his quick suggestion of the topic, it was clear that the male teachers had already discussed this while the female teachers were discussing about their previous topic. A female teacher asked, what are we going to imitate? The male teacher explained, we will imitate actions and expressions. Each team member will make an action or expression and the other team will have to follow suit. The team that is not able to follow along will be the losers. This is something new. We've never played this before last time. Okay, no problem. We accept your challenge. Come on. The female teachers were full of confidence. This first action was to be done by a male teacher who walked to the front with hearty laughter. He got down on the floor and did a one-handed push-up. This action might not even be possible if Zhong Yi were the one doing it, as it was related to body strength and muscle groups holding up the person's weight. It wasn't something just anyone could do. But it turned out the female teacher's team also had an able member. It was a young, petite, and slim female teacher. She walked up silently to the front, then got down on the floor with both hands on the ground initially to try out the posture first. Then she lifted her left and placed it behind her back and imitated the action of a one-handed push-up, persisting for one second before she could not hold it up anymore. It was only for that one second and not as long as the male teacher, but was still considered to have passed. The male teachers were amazed. Damn. She really did it. Who is that teacher? I know her. She's not a teacher from the universities, rather she's a deputy head at the Chinese literature department of one of the high-ranking high schools. I think she has danced since she was in her teens. That's why her physical condition is quite good. How awesome. Even I couldn't do that. The female teachers were also applauding and cheering. Teacher Ku is too Ku. Teacher Ku, impressive. Ha ha. 
then this teacher Ku stood up and immediately did an action. She did the splits right where she was. Who's next? The splits were still a considerably common routine, but that was more in the context of a woman whose body was more flexible. For a man, even if he was very flexible, the split's still very difficult to handle. However, there were also incredible people in the male teacher's team. Let me give it a try. A skinny male teacher came forward and adjusted himself for a long time before slowly splitting his legs apart and getting lower onto the floor. However, at the last bit of the action, he was unable to go down any further. He clenched his teeth and turned around to ask for help. Can two people help me out a little here? Press me down slowly, I should be able to do it. Two male teachers went over to help. Press. Press again. In the end, he really was able to do it. The male teacher's team cheered. Beautiful. Teacher who really gave it his all. Really well done. I've heard that little who used to practice taekwondo as an amateur. Looks like that's true. Little whose ligaments are really elastic. That male teacher got up with the assistance of his team members. When he finally stood up, he was already swaying around a little, unable to stand properly. This round was enough to cause him some pain and even very nearly took his life. The victor was decided in the next round by a male teacher. When he made the action, the female teachers all fainted at once. They saw him stick out his tongue and push the tip up and up and further up and touch the tip of his nose. What the heck? He could do that? That's really amazing. We're done for. The female teachers were totally at a loss for a response. They attempted to imitate the same action but failed after countless tries. Don't even mention being able to lick the tip of your nose, most people couldn't even make their tongue cover the philtrum. The judges announced and declared with great laughter the male teacher's team as the victors of the second round. Su Na waved her hands and said, Teacher Jong, stop eating already. Come here and drink up. Only then did Zhong Yi put down the razor clams in his hands and turn around to look over. You all lost? A female teacher said, we lost, so it's your turn now. Zhong Yi acknowledged that and walked over to pick up the bottle of beer. He composed himself a little and then gulped it down in a single breath. As he drank too quickly, he could feel himself swaying a little from the alcohol and the ice-cold temperature of the beer. The contest was getting more exciting as it progressed. In the third round, the female teacher's team won. The fourth round was taken by the male teachers. After the sixth round, both sides were still tied at 3 to 3. Zhong Yi had drunk three bottles of ice cold beer and with his alcohol tolerance not exactly high, he already felt like he couldn't drink anymore. His belly was already bloated. But everyone else was still playing around happily, not feeling tired amid all the laughter. Teacher Zhong can't take it anymore? Ha ha, little Jong can't drink anymore, let's keep going for victory. Why don't we make the seventh round the decider? Agreed, the seventh round will decide the winner. Then who shall decide the topic? I think for the sake of fairness, we should let the judges decide the seventh round's topic. Okay. That would be great. This is make or break. Everyone agreed to make the last round the decider. The three judges began their discussion and communicated for a long time before finally agreeing on a topic together. The Chinese literature team's Li Rui stepped up and smiled as he announced, after our discussion, we've decided that everyone compete in the final round on the topic of, poetry. As for the subject, this hill we are currently residing on used to have a couple staying here. A classic saying was even coined because of them, so in accordance to this setting, the subject has been decided as, husband and wife. Any sort of poetry theme will be accepted, so whoever comes up with the neatest and most elegant version that also fits the theme well will win this round. Poems? Everyone was very surprised by this. Among the judges, Li Rui was part of the Chinese literature question setting team. Even those who weren't on the Chinese literature question setting team had heard of Zhong Yi's reputation in poetry, so how could Li Rui not know that this what Zhong Yi's expertise? Zhong Yi had first became famous because of his poems, so from this decision on the topic, did it show Li Rui and the judges' team favoring the female teachers' team and wanted them to have the advantage in winning? But that was not it. Quite a few people knew that Li Rui was not especially fond of Zhong Yi's poems, 
and had also criticized Zhong Yi on the internet when Zhong Yi was involved in the scolding battles with his literary circle peers. Besides, Liao Qi and a few of the Chinese literature team teachers like Liao Qi and Ma Qi had clashed with Zhong Yi privately over the college entrance exam work that they had been working on the past few days. They felt that Zhong Yi's literary standards had been deified too much by people. Even though they admitted that Zhong Yi's literary standards were high, they did not think that Zhong Yi was as great as what everyone thought him to be. They did not believe that he deserved the status he was revered with. At the top of the Great Pyramid of the Literary Circle, there were only a few surviving masters. While many people mentioned Zhong Yi in the same breath with those masters, they did not feel that Zhong Yi was qualified enough. Then what was the meaning of this topic? Suddenly, Liao Qi came forward and said, Send me up for this round. When everyone saw that, they were suddenly enlightened and could roughly understand what was going on. It was no wonder that Li Rui had chosen to use poetry as the topic. It was because those people from the Chinese literature team were not convinced of Zhong Yi's talent and wanted to use this chance to test him and go up against him. They had come prepared and even came up with a subject that was rather subtle. Everyone knew that Zhong Yi's standard in poems specializing in scolding was very high, so they were not careless either and did not clash head on with Zhong Yi. As such, they had chosen the theme of husband and wife for the subject. This theme was something that had never been reflected in Zhong Yi's previous works before. They were trying to limit his skills so that they could beat him. Chapter 705, Little Zhong Unleashed At the top of the hill. The atmosphere among the teachers was suddenly lively. How interesting. Yeah, a poetry duel? That is playing to Zhong Yi's strength. Teacher Liao isn't bad either. Teacher Liao Qi is not only an associate professor at Tsinghua University, he also holds a position in the Poetry Association, so his standards are really high too. But he still won't match up to Zhong Yi. Don't you know what sort of level Zhong Yi is at? Ha ha, that may not necessarily be true. Teacher Liao is not weak either. It's just that Teacher Liao's works are more artistic, unlike Teacher Zhong's poems which are essentially tuned for the masses, so they are not so widespread and well-known by people. That is why we can't say that teacher Liao's standards are inferior to Zhong Yi. Yeah, I think there could be a little competition between the two of them. Looks like teacher Liao prepared ahead of time. That's right, to even dare to have a contest in poetry with Zhong Yi, he must definitely have come prepared. Looks like there's something we can look forward to here. Start the duel then. Teacher Zhong, go out. Teacher Liao, come on. Quite a few people started to cheer them on in full anticipation. However, Su Ene winked a few times at Zhong Yi with full intent. She was also a part of the Chinese literature question setting team and naturally knew that some teachers had some issues with Zhong Yi, a minority group of Chinese literature teachers from Tsinghua and Renmin University led mainly by Liao Qi. They were very unhappy with the fact that a tumor of the literary and educational world like Zhong Yi was flourishing so well. So when the few of them suddenly created such a showdown during the contest, she suspected that they were surely up to no good. She wanted to remind Zhong Yi to be careful. As for his poetry, Su Ene was not the least bit worried since she clearly knew Zhong Yi's abilities. Behind Zhong Yi, two Peking University female teachers quietly tapped on Zhong Yi to remind him as well. From this, it could be seen that even though everyone was getting along harmoniously, Speaking and laughing together with all the activities from earlier, it was all just fun and games. Now that this topic had been brought up, the atmosphere was no longer the same. This was the real thing. It felt like they truly wanted to challenge Zhong Yi. Naturally, most of the Peking University teachers were on the side of Zhong Yi. Peking University had long been old foes with Tsinghua University. When something like this happened, it was always clear to everyone where they should stand, Judge Li Rui asked. Has the male teacher's team chosen their representative for this round? Liao Qi nodded. How about the female teacher's team? Li Rui turned his head and looked at the other side. A female teacher from Tsinghua University smiled and said, Our side is definitely sending teacher Zhong out to compete this round. I don't think I need to further explain teacher Zhong's poetry standards, do I? On the other side, a male teacher from Tsinghua University also chimed in, Right, I've long heard of teacher Zhong's abilities to compose a poem as soon as he lifts up the brush. Come forward then, teacher Zhong. 
the several Tsinghua university teachers began echoing each other, some praising first before attacking. But who would have expected the following to happen? When Zhong Yi heard them, he gave a wave of his hands and said, I'm not going to. I'd said earlier that I would be on this team only to help the ladies drink if they got punished. I'm a guy here and not truly a part of the female teacher's team. Li Rui smiled. The female teacher's team has already claimed you, so you're part of the group. Since everyone is recommending you, why don't you step up and take part in this final round? Zhong Yi was standing in front of the barbecue grill and only cared about cooking the meat. You girls go ahead, I just want to eat my meat. My poetry is just SOSO anyway. He was totally unable to garner any interest in this poetry contest. Oh, right, Teacher Su Na's standard is very high, so why don't we get Teacher Su to do it? Su Na was speechless. Why do I have to do it? Zhong Yi kept pushing it around, not wanting to take responsibility at all. If it were anyone else trying to evade the responsibility, everyone would surely think that the person was not confident, was afraid to lose, or feared losing face, and thus did not dare to take up the challenge. But when it was Zhong Yi doing the evading, no one thought in that way at all. This was because Zhong Yi's poetry composition standards were something everyone already knew about. Those works, like the furthest distance in the world, Dead Water, admiring the mountains were there for everyone to see and were brilliant works without a doubt. It was impossible for Zhong Yi to not be confident or afraid to lose. The only reason he did not take up the challenge was, he was not interested or wasn't in the mood to do so. Everyone hooted. Zhong Yi, get up there. If you don't go, there will be no one representing the female teachers. Yeah, you're the only person on the female teacher's team who is well-versed enough at poetry. This is the final round. It's even the decider of the overall winner. We're all having so much fun, so teacher Zhong, you will surely honor that, won't you? Right, let's have a good contest. After dragging on for a long time. Seeing the situation, Liao Qi from the male teacher's team suddenly said, since there's no decision on who is to represent the female teacher's team, then I will just have to shamelessly go first. The theme is husband and wife. Judge Li Rui said, correct. Liao Qi asked, do we have a brush and ink? Yes. A teacher said with some laughter nearby. It was specially prepared for the typical contest. I knew that there would surely be something like this today, so I prepared it ahead of time. There. Everything is laid out now. He laid them out with the help from a few other teachers and even the table was set up. Of course, since they were in an isolated location on a hill, they were not too fastidious about the details of these tools and equipment. Everything were just the simplest items they could get their hands on. Everyone was looking forward to the contest. It's starting. Teacher Liao seems very confident. Who do you all think will win? If Zhong Yi does it, then the chances of him winning are larger. But if Zhong Yi doesn't want to take part, then there's not likely anyone on the female teacher's team who can beat teacher Liao at this. That's what I think too. The theme of the poem has to be related to husband and wife. This won't be easy. Under the attention of all the teachers, Liao Qi of Tsinghua University's Chinese department slowly walked up to the table and stood there stolidly. He composed himself for a moment, and as though with great thought, a glimmer of bright light shone from his eyes as he held the brush firmly in his hands. He looked like he already had something in his mind and began writing. Kish, regular script, characters vividly came to life on the scroll, 1. We tied up our hair to become husband and wife. Our love and affection we never doubted. Without a pause, the poem was written out in one go. When Liao Qi finally lifted his hand and put down the brush, the observing crowd couldn't help but cheer. Great! This poem is too beautiful. It fits the theme perfectly. The couple's mutual feelings for each other were described too vividly. This is so great. This poem is really quite good. It rhymes wells, the theme is clear and fits the mood perfectly. There's nothing to nitpick at all. This poem is sure to win. Teacher Liao's really skilled at this. Yeah, even if Zhong Yi were to step forward now, he might not win. That's true, even if Zhong Yi were to write the next poem, how much better could it get than this? That's not true. Zhong Yi's poems usually bring with them a certain strength I think can be better than this one. 
for the same thing, the benevolent sees benevolence and the wise sees wisdom, I suppose. When it comes to art, it has always been difficult to say who is better. In any case, I feel that teacher Liao's poem is as good as perfect. 2. Ma Chi from the Chinese literature team started clapping. Professor Liao, great poem. Judge Li Rui also applauded and gave his acknowledgement, how wonderful. Liao Chi smiled slightly. Thank you everyone. The mood just came to me and I was able to freely express it well enough. At this moment, the young male teacher from the judging team looked in the direction of the female teacher's team with a smile and said, who will you all be sending out? The topic has a time limit of 10 minutes, so if no one is going to do it, will you be drinking instead? Liao Qi smiled in the direction of Zhong Yi. The others also mostly focused their attention to Zhong Yi. But it was like Zhong Yi did not notice them at all. His back was still facing them as he continued eating. He gobbled up the scallops and oysters by the mouthful like a glutton who could never eat enough. It was like he was either acting high and mighty or purposely keeping a low profile. It was really just because he could not get into the mood to duel with poetry today. Was there any meaning to this? A big sister figure on the female teacher's team walked over. Little Zhong. Ari, Zhong Yi mumbled as he continued eating. Millimeter, what's the matter? The big sis was didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Stop eating. We're going to lose if this goes on. It's always been an annual tradition that the losing team also has to perform a group punishment besides drinking. Sometimes we have to do a group dance or a group run, and that's really quite embarrassing. John Yi acknowledged her and just continued to eat. Su Na also came over. Teacher Zhong, go up. It's your turn. Zhong Yi said with some amusement, you're quite good at poems too. Why don't you do it and I will support you. Su Na could only helplessly smile at that. My level of poetry composition should not be shown on any stage whatsoever. Besides, I've already seen teacher Liao's poem and it's at least five grades higher than my level. I don't want to embarrass myself. We're all depending on you, teacher Zhong. You have to win this round for us. Yeah, come on, Zhong Yi. Teacher Zhong, hurry up. We're relying on you. Stop eating already. Hurry up and go win. Many of the female teachers were constantly nagging him. Some of the younger female teacher might find winning to be more important, probably because they didn't want to perform the punishment and just wanted to quickly win the round. Suddenly, a young male teacher from Tsinghua University shouted from his group, if teacher Zhong does not dare to take the challenge, then we should just get someone else. Liao Qi smiled at that. Li Rui and the minority group of people from the Chinese literature team were also watching the fun. Doesn't dare to? Doesn't dare to take the challenge? When Zhong Yi heard that, he looked in the direction of where the voice came from and let out a laugh. I know you'll try to goad me into taking the challenge. Do you think that this kind of goading will work on me? Then he put down the food he had in his hands and went over. Yes, it works very well on me. Su Na, Pfut. Liao Qi. Li Rui. The female teachers were highly amused by this. Wiping his hands clean, Zhong Yi walked up to the table and confirmed with the three judges, the theme is husband and wife, right? There are no other restrictions on the poem type? Li Rui answered, yes. Zhong Yi nodded and lifted up the brush. With that, everyone came together to surround Zhong Yi at once, sticking out their necks and trying to glimpse the Xian paper. Liao Qi and the others were also in the crowd. Even with so many people watching, Zhong Yi still looked very listless, clearly not too excited by everything that was happening. It was like he just casually picked up the brush without even thinking and just started scribbling onto the Xian paper. It was Shinki, three, gazing with dried eyes over the span of mountains and rivers, how many a bosom friend have I met thus far? Chapter 706, Husband Missing Wife. He put down the brush. The composition was complete. When the first line of this poem was initially revealed, no one could see anything good about it. Everyone first noticed Zhong Yi's aesthetically pleasing characters, and when he wrote out the rest of the characters with an unrestrained, elegant motion of the brush despite his body looking extremely relaxed, many of the young female teachers who were observing started exclaiming excitedly. 
a few of the teachers and professors who were professionally trained in calligraphy also had stunned expressions. They rushed closer to have a clearer look, then looked even more stunned. These words. This calligraphy skill is so high level. An amateur hobbyist would not be able to write in this manner. Is that shinky? I've never seen such a style of shinky before, it feels a little similar to the traditional XNGSH style, but yet a little different. 1. The characters are beautifully written. I didn't expect that Zhong Yi could write such a good calligraphy piece. It's also my first time learning that teacher Zhong's calligraphy skills are at such a high level. Everyone was stunned at what they were seeing. Liao Qi raised an eyebrow, looking rather surprised as well. The several Tsinghua University teachers all looked at one another. Only Su Na's expression did not change. Previously at the Calligraphy Association's anniversary gathering, which was also a day to celebrate Wu Ziqing and another calligraphy master's birthdays, Su Na and many others from the Calligraphy Association had all witnessed Zhong Yi's calligraphy skills. Su Na felt that the best work by Zhong Yi was that poem called Ode to Mulan. All the unique styles of Zhong Yi's writing were reflected in this work. This was a style unique to Zhong Yi. No one could write in the same way as him even if they imitated such a style directly from his works. Clearly, no one from this world knew that Zhong Yi's calligraphy was imitated from the handwriting style of his previous world's famed calligraphy master, Wang Shiji, the sage of calligraphy. Even though Zhong Yi had not eaten enough calligraphy skill experience books yet, and was still lacking quite a bit of soul, as long as he could achieve 20% of Wang Shiji's calligraphy style, it would be enough to shock the people of this world. The title of Sage of Calligraphy was not for nothing, and not self-proclaimed by Wang Shiji himself, but affirmed by history itself. It's so good. T. His words are really feast for the eyes. If this were a contest of calligraphy, Professor Liao would have been utterly defeated. Yeah, but the topic is still on poetry. Many people were full of praise, but after having their breath taken by Zhong Yi's calligraphy skills, everyone slowly began to notice Zhong Yi's poem. They wanted to know how Zhong Yi would perform with the theme of husband and wife he was unfamiliar with. Su Na squeezed to the front. Dean Pan also went forward. The poem read like this, husband missing wife gazing with dried eyes over the span of mountains and rivers, how many a bosom friend have I met thus far? The pot empty, afraid of pouring wine, difficult to pen my reply. Journeyed away from the living for a long time, without news I slowly return home. The lamp serves as my companion on lonely nights, I am thinking of you, my wife and son. After he finished, Zhong Yi even left his signature on the piece. After a final glance at his work, Zhong Yi nodded with satisfaction and put down his brush. Then he strolled toward the surrounding crowd and squeezed past them to make his way back to the barbecue grill to continue eating, this time attacking the grilled mushrooms. The remaining crowd cheered. Great poem. The entire poem revolves around that the missing character. It embodies the husband's thoughts and feelings for his wife and was described in such a lonely but beautiful manner. Awesome. I'd thought that teacher Liao's poem had already reached the peak of perfection. Who knew that Teacher Zhong is indeed Teacher Zhong? He thoroughly deserves his reputation. It's not any worse in comparison to Teacher Liao's poem. Moreover, Zhong Yi is not even married yet, so this theme of husband and wife was already a topic not in his area of expertise. If we consider that point and include the fact that this was an improvised work, then it shows even more clearly how skillful Zhong Yi is. Professor Zhong is still so full of literary talent. Well composed. This poem is just like his calligraphy skill, they're both amazing. Beautifully executed, Teacher Zhong. Ha ha. Dean Pan nodded firmly, giving his approval. Su Na gave Zhong Yi a thumbs up from afar. Most of those in the female teacher's team also happily started dishing out their praise. As expected, Zhong Yi did not disappoint them, he did not let them down at this critical juncture. A female teacher laughed, I guess we won this final round. Ma Chi from the Chinese literature team frowned. What do you mean by you all won it? Teacher Liao's work is also very good. At least in terms of usage of words, I find teacher Liao's phrasing to be more sophisticated. A male teacher from Tsinghua University nodded with a smile. I also find teacher Liao's poem to be better and more beautiful. Su Na disagreed, of course it's teacher Zhong's poem that's better. 
No question. A female professor looked at the male teacher's team and said, Whoa, you guys don't want to admit that you've lost now. Why do we have to admit that we lost? Teacher Liao has indeed composed his poem quite well, so it's still very difficult to say who has won or lost yet. After all, when it comes to art, it's very difficult to distinguish who is better. Everyone has their own views and opinions, someone from the male teacher's team said. An older professor who was very qualified commented, that's true. In my opinion, each of these two poems have their strong points that stand out. It isn't easy to come to a clear conclusion as to which is better, so why don't we leave this to the judges? We will let the three judges vote and whichever work gets more will win. Sure. Let's leave it to the judges then. Agreed. John Yi will definitely win. It has to be teacher Liao who wins it. Everyone looked to the judges, eager to find out the result. Liao Qi was also very concerned about the results, but did not show it on his face. But compared to Liao Qi and the few other Tsinghua University teachers, Zhong Yi was even more indifferent. After completing his job, he left it all behind and went straight back to eating and drinking. At this moment, the young male teacher judge said something. In my opinion, I still think that teacher Zhong's husband missing wife is better. Compared to the other poem I enjoyed the mood of this poem more. The female teacher's team suddenly laughed happily at this. That's how it should be. Well said. Then the next judge, Li Rui said, I don't quite agree as I feel that both poems carry the mood quite similarly. However, I find teacher Liao's poem to be clearly more suited to the theme of husband and wife. In his poem, it greatly shows the theme with the husband, wife, and love written into it. But teacher Zhong Yi's poem is more written from the perspective of the husband and only expresses one side of the pair's feelings. The poem is still good, but in the context of the theme, teacher Liao's poem definitely takes it. Many of those who heard this judgment also thought that this was a logical argument. That's true. Yeah, teacher Liao's poem is more complete and in line with the theme. Yes, regardless of how teacher Liao's other poems are, this one today is really quite well written. Li Rui voted for Liao Qi. Zhong Yi and Liao Qi were now at a draw with the votes at one to one. It was all down to the last judge's decision. The last judge was the comparatively older professor who walked up over to the two poems which had been hung up vertically to take a closer look at them. He then turned around with a helpless smile. I can't decide which is better. Both are beautiful to read, so why don't I abstain from voting and we'll make this a draw? Draw. Man. Then who's the winner? I guess that just means there's no winner or loser. Then will we be adding another round to the contest? Let's just leave it as a draw. Hi, we nearly did it, he he. I was still hoping to see the male teacher's team perform square dancing. 2. The contest finally ended with a draw. This was a result many people could accept. It was just a game after all, so as long as they were not judged to have lost and had to be punished, then it would be fine. Liao Qi did not have any issues with this either. To be able to come up against Zhong Yi and walk away with a draw was a result he could wholly accept. At the moment, he and a few other Tsinghua University teachers all shot a belittling glance at Zhong Yi. As expected, just like how Liao Qi and a minority of them thought, Zhong Yi did not turn out as legendary as they claimed. If it really had to be said, at most Zhong Yi could be considered a very excellent literary artist. A master? He's not at that level yet. Even Liao Qi's poem could draw level on terms with his, so how could Zhong Yi be considered on the level of a master? His standard was only SOSO. Ma Qi said with the intention of bootlicking, I can see that teacher Liao has surpassed himself and gone a level higher already. Will this be the path you will be walking down more often from now on? Liao Qi laughed and waved it off. Me? I think it's better for me to keep teaching with honest intentions, composing poetry and such things should just remain a hobby for me. I wouldn't do this professionally. Li Rui also smiled and said, for an amateur to write at such a good level, you're making us feel embarrassed. Several of the Tsinghua University teachers also gradually chipped in with their flattery. Over at the other side, Su Ene had walked up to Zhong Yi from behind. Still in the mood to eat? Zhong Yi grunted out a yes. I've been using my mind too much for the past few days. I don't really know why I am feeling so hungry, 
but I've probably spent too much energy thinking. Not only was he tired from thinking about the question setting for the exams, he had also done some speed learning this morning using the memory search capsules. Su N.A. pouted, they've already come to a judgment over there. It's a draw. Zhong Yi smiled. I heard it. If it's a draw, so be it. This poem of yours today was indeed not bad, but compared to your previous works, I feel that you have not fulfilled your potential, Su N.A. said helplessly. You're usually more competitive than this, but look at you today. It seemed like you didn't care at all. I don't think you even gave it any thought when you were writing this poem, right? You just casually picked up the brush and composed it. If you had been more serious, how could you possibly not beat teacher Liao? This isn't your usual standard at all. I can't beat him. I composed it offhandedly. Zhong Yi smiled without saying a word. He did not offer any arguments to that. Beside them, a few Peking University female teachers also said, Hi, Teacher Zhong, you've really underestimated your opponent today. Teacher Liao obviously came prepared, yet you didn't do your best. With your reputation, a draw would already mean that we lost. If it gets out that Teacher Liao's poetry standards are on equal standing with you, Teacher Liao would get all the attention. By then, everyone might even think that we all from Peking University aren't a match for them from Tsinghua University. Suddenly, someone appeared walking up the hill towards them. It was the Chinese literature question setting team's Yu Fan. Prior to this, Yu Fan was busy with the examination work and thus came rather late. When he arrived, he was a little taken aback by the scene. He smiled and asked, What's the matter? Was there a contest again? Who won this year? How did you all divide up the teams? Li Rui smiled and said, It's a tie this year. Yu Fan blinked. You can even manage to tie. Ma Chi said, In the final round, both teams finished with a draw. A summary of the situation was related to Chief Yu. Chief Yu's interest perked and he went forward. Let me have a look. Chapter 707, Marvelous, Hidden Palindrome Poem. The contest ended. Everyone was back to speaking in joyful manners with each other. Ma Chi said to Chief Yu, we were divided by gender into two teams, but because the female teacher's team do not really know how to drink, Zhong Yi was pulled over to join their team. The final round was a contest between Teacher Liao and Teacher Zhong. Chief Yu said a little taken aback, what did they compete on? Ma Chi said, poetry, with the theme of husband and wife. Chief Yu looked at Liao Chi and smiled. Old Liao is back to writing poetry? Liao Qi smiled and said, yes, it was spontaneous and not something that can't be presented on the professional stage. Chief Yu, you're the professional here, why don't you look over my piece and give me some pointers? Chief Yu waved it off, feeling flattered. I sure can take a look, but I don't dare claim to be able to give any advice. If we're talking about writing poetry, you're at a higher level than me. Liao Qi laughed heartily. Chief Yu, you're being modest. At this moment, Su N.A. came over to join them. I still feel that Teacher Zhong's poem is better. Chief Yu, since you're here, why don't you give us your opinion? You're definitely the authoritative figure in this area. A female teacher from Peking University also added, yes, please take a look. As the Chinese literature question setting team's chief and the supervisor, Yu Fan's qualifications were unquestionable. In the Chinese literature team, he was definitely among the top few members. Whether it was in the education or academic world, he had had many great achievements in them. On the literary front, everyone had complete conviction in Chief Yu. Since nobody could agree on who won or lost and stuck to their own opinions of whom was better, then why not let an expert give his views instead? Chief Yu agreed, sure. In the blink of an eye, he was walking toward the two poems that were hung up, Everyone else also came up behind, surrounding him not too far away. We tied our hair to become husband and wife, our love and affection we never doubted. When Chief Yu read these lines out loud, he couldn't help nodding agreeably. Fine poem. Then he turned his head to look at the other poem. Gazing with dried eyes over the span of mountains and rivers, how many a bosom friend have I met thus far? After reading the poem, Chief Yu was suddenly silent. He stared at the poem for a long time and did not give any comments or say that it was a fine poem like he did for Liao Qi's work. Instead, he seemed to have become lost in thought. 
Everyone saw, but did not understand what was going on. What's happening? I don't know. Is there something wrong with Zhong Yi's poem? Why isn't Chief Yu saying anything? Li Rui from the Chinese literature team blinked, then said to Chief Yu, Teacher Zhong's poem did not touch clearly on the theme of the subject. It's not complete enough as it only depicts the feelings of the husband and not the wife's. Comparatively, Teacher Liao's poem is complete, and even though it was decided that this was a draw, I still feel that Teacher Liao has won this round. Ma Qi said, if they were contesting calligraphy skills, then needless to say, Zhong Yi's calligraphy skill is already at a very high level. It's not something an amateur can come up against, but if we are talking about the poem alone, then I also think that Teacher Liao has won. Chief Yu still maintained his silence. One second. Two seconds. Three seconds. Suddenly, Chief Yu gaze lit up and he unexpectedly turned around to ask, this was written by teacher Zhong Yi? Li Rui answered with some reservation, yes. Chief Yu sucked in a breath, then turned his head back around and continued staring at that poem. The longer he looked at it, the more shocked he felt, and the more wry his smile became. Everyone was confused as they did not understand what Chief Yu was doing. Dean Pan finally said, Old Yu, what are you daydreaming about? Which of the poems are better? Spit it out. Dean Pan was not knowledgeable about poetry and such, having only been around numbers all his life. Hearing that, Chief Yu smiled as he shook his head. Whose poem is better? Yeah, that's right. Chief Yu, stop keeping us on our toes. So whose poem is better? It should be a draw, right? Everyone was extremely curious and wanted to know. When Chief Yu finished listening to all they had to say, he broke out into laughter. If we're talking about whose poem is better or of a higher standard, then I really am unable to pass judgment on that, because the difference between these two poems are not simply just a grade or two. These two poems are, basically worlds apart. A draw? A tie? Which of you decided on that, he said with an amused expression. Li Rui exclaimed, worlds apart? Ma Qi was stunned. Surely it's not to that extreme? So who won? Chief Yu did not even think and just replied, do you even need to ask who won? It's obviously teacher Zhong's poem that won, and it won by a difference that one cannot even begin to imagine. The difference between these two poems is not simply just a level or two. When Liao Qi heard this, his expression immediately turned dark. Oh. Zhong Yi who wasn't too far away from them also heard this and glanced at them. Su Na was also very surprised at this. I do think that teacher Zhong's husband missing wife is better, but it's still just a little better. Surely it can't be that much better, can it? Dean Pan asked, is there really such a great difference? A female teacher asked, surely that's not true, is it? A male teacher from Tsinghua University said, aren't these two poems quite similar to each other? How did you reach such a conclusion? Many people were once again looking at Zhong Yi's husband missing wife because of Chief Yu's comments. They wanted to look at it in detail, but could not understand no matter how hard they tried. Moreover, as Li Rui said, if they really wanted to quibble over the matter of the usage of words, then Zhong Yi's husband missing wife definitely didn't suit the theme too well, so why did his poem get so revered by Chief Yu? This poem clearly had a flaw, didn't it? Chief Yu glanced at Li Rui and said, you were saying earlier that teacher Zhong did not fully touch on the theme? It wasn't complete. Li Rui said, yes, I really don't understand why you are praising husband missing wife so much. If this poem had another part depicting the wife's feelings for her husband on top of his feelings for her, then it would be complete and would be able to match up to teacher Liao's work. After all, this isn't an open topic that one can freely decide what to write, but is limited to the scope of the given theme instead. Chief Yu sniggered. Wife missing husband. Ma Qi said, yes. Chief Yu smiled and said, if I were to tell you that it exists in this poem? Everyone was stunned. Huh? There's what? Wife missing husband. Where is it? Yeah, there's nothing that mentions that. Damn, what is Chief Yu talking about? Isn't this just husband missing wife? It's depicting the husband's feelings of missing his wife from beginning till end, where's the depiction of the wife's part? Everyone was feeling confused, not understanding what Chief Yu was talking about. 
In the end, Chief Yu did not keep everyone in suspense and looked up at the poem once again, some shock still in his eyes. He pointed at it and said, This poem is not as simple as what you see on the surface, nor was it written casually by Little Zhong. There's something hidden in it, so why don't you read it backwards to find out what it is? Su Na was stunned. What? Liao Qi said, Read it backwards? Li Rui said appalled, What do you mean by reading it backwards? How can we read it backwards? Chief Yu smiled and said, Don't believe it. Then why don't you all try reading it once that way? Everyone looked at the last two lines of the poem with the intention to just give it a try as Chief Yu suggested. The lamp serves as my companion on lonely nights, I am thinking of you, my wife and son. Read it backwards? Someone who was not convinced by anything that was said so far, recited it out aloud, your, wife, and, son, are, thinking, of, you. However, just listening to this first line was enough to stun a few people. This, this. Oh my god. Wife missing husband. There's really a goddamn wife missing husband. What the heck? What was this? Just what the heck was this? Su Na was very shocked, but hurriedly continued reciting it, each word louder and louder, keeping a lonesome watch like a solitary lamp. Hesitating to send letters with no response. Long departed, we're separated like life and death. Why do you find it difficult to pen a reply? Pouring a bowl of wine yet afraid the pot will empty. Even as bosom friends, we have barely met. Gazing with dried eyes over the span of mountains and rivers. When the entire poem was read out aloud backwards, all of the teachers present there, including the Tsinghua and Peking University teachers were all stunned. An antithesis? It was done to extreme neatness. 1. Does it rhyme? It rhymed perfectly. Moreover, there was a difference in the poem when read backwards or forward. It was like another poem with a change in perspective. Reading it normally, it was about a man missing his wife. Reading it backwards, it was about a woman missing her husband. This was simply unbelievable. Su Na exclaimed, holy shit. A female teacher from Peking University also said, holy shit. A female teacher from an institute of technology echoed them, holy shit. Liao Qi. Li Rui was desperately gasping for air. Ma Qi was dumbfounded. Dean Pan was dumbfounded. The other teachers were all dumbfounded. Suddenly, a younger female teacher shouted from the crowd, palindrome poem. It's a palindrome poem. 2. At this moment, no one knew what words could express their feelings anymore. Perhaps, the most suitable phrase that could depict their moods right now was, what the f asterisk ck. Could it get any more awesome than this? Could it be any more unbelievable than this? To think that just a moment ago, Su Na, and the other female teachers from Peking University were still grumbling about how Zhong Yi did not seem to be putting in any effort, and just casually composing a poem without serious thought. Who knew that it turned out to be the complete opposite of that? Zhong Yi did not just casually compose it. If he did that, would the poem be able to be read from both directions? Why don't you be casual and show us that instead? This was clearly a poem that Zhong Yi had put a lot of thought into to create. And he even did it spontaneously on the spot. There wasn't even a draft. A draw? A tie? Thinking about how everyone had earlier come to such a conclusion, it would surely make anyone laugh their heads off. How could it be a tie? Chief Yu was right, these two poems were never in the same world to begin with. Even if Liao Qi's poem was pushed up a further four to five grades, it would still fall far behind Zhong Yi's poem. The chasm was too wide. This was a difference in the standards and level of the poet, a difference that couldn't be bridged even with a different usage of words and composition techniques. Liao Qi remained silent. A few of the teachers from Tsinghua University who had been stirring the pot earlier to get Zhong Yi to step up to take the challenge also, stayed quiet. The difference in standards were too great that they didn't even know what they could say anymore. To compete with Zhong Yi in composing poetry? Perhaps from the beginning, this whole incident was already the greatest joke in the world. At this time, the way that many of those present were all looking at Zhong Yi was like they had seen a god. There were even some people who were still staring so hard at Zhong Yi's poem that they couldn't snap out of it. 
they read it over and over again, forwards and backwards. Every time they completed reading it once, they felt an urge to curse at someone's second grandma to appease their shock. This poem was, really too goddamn awesome. Su Na suddenly walked up quickly to get Zhong Yi's poem and rolled it up carefully. She held the rolled up Xian paper in her hands and said, I didn't get your ode to Mulan previously, so don't even try to reject me. Please gift this poem to me, teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi smiled and threw up his hands. Whatever. But no one else was having any of it. They all rushed up and tried to claim it for themselves. What's this, what's this? Little N.A., don't even try to jump the gun on us. Teacher Su, what do you mean by it's yours? I was still thinking of taking it for myself. Little Su, please let me have the poem. I will treat you to one month's worth of lunch. Teacher Zhong Yi, gift it to me instead, please. Chapter 708, the date of the college entrance examination has come. Zhong Yi's poem was being fought for over by everyone. Other than the value of Zhong Yi's calligraphy, the other main reason was because this poem was such a classic that each person wanted it to adorn the walls of their home. However, it still ended up being given to Su Na, as she was the first one lay her hands on the scroll of Xian paper the poem was written on and had already gotten the best chance of keeping it. On top of that, everyone also knew that Su Na and Zhong Yi were colleagues at the Chinese department in Peking University who enjoyed a good relationship together. As a result, no one really made any further attempts to get it from her after that. Hi. I was a step too late. I really like this poem a lot. Who doesn't like it? That's obvious. Let me suggest this, why don't we have another contest and let Zhong Yi compose a few more poems so that we can share them equally. Do you all agree? As it turned out, no one bothered with such a suggestion. Another round? Who can compete with Zhong Yi? You? Having seen this palindrome poem, no one here today dared challenge Zhong Yi anymore. If anyone still dared to boast and go up against him, then surely that person would only be brought down in shame. By contrast, Liao Qi was looking clearly depressed away from the others. Chief Yu saw this and went over to offer some comforting words. Old Liao, don't take it to heart. Everyone has something that they are good at. When it comes to poetry, it's what Zhong Yi excels at. Almost no one in the entire country can stand on equal footing with him, so your loss is not something to be ashamed of. Liao Qi did not say anything. The other Tsing were university teachers who were provoking Zhong Yi earlier now felt hot with embarrassment. Half of their group had left the place earlier. An old professor from Renmin University beside them said, the younger generation will surpass the older. Today's celebratory feast has given many of these teachers the chance to widen their horizons. Having been able to witness such awesome poetry made it worth their time in attending. Not long after, the celebratory feast ended. Everyone was still talking about the poem excitedly as they proceeded back to their own dorms. This poem was actually by Li Yu from the Song Dynasty in Zhong Yi's previous world. The poem was titled A Husband's and Wife's Mutual Sodade. This palindromic poem was very famous among all the ancient palindromic poems. Zhong Yi had come across it once in a book and remembered it. Since he brought it over to this world on this occasion, it was naturally able to shock everyone. Later that afternoon. In the dorms on the hillside. After Zhong Yi came back, he immediately took a shower and did not place much importance of today's incident. After his shower, he went to the library and borrowed another dozen or so books and brought them back to his dorm room. He restarted his work from this morning and started flipping through the pages of content. Then he used a memory search capsule to take in all the details of the information he had flipped through in the books earlier, and memorized all of it. Now he could simply just retrieve any information he wanted from his mind. One book. Another book. Zhong Yi did not mind the boredom or loneliness and just repeated the same thing over and over again, working hard to absorb the vast knowledge of this world to use them as a basis and prepare himself for the future. He was already planning to use the remaining days approaching the date of the college entrance examination in this way. The next day. Daytime. No one knew who did it, but Zhong Yi's a husband's and wife's mutual sod aid was suddenly posted online to Weibo along with a message. This was composed by Zhong Yi at the private location where the college entrance examination question setting teams are held. 
Come and enjoy this piece of poetry, everyone. Let me give you all a hint, there's a mystery to it, he he. Judging from the tone, it seemed like it was a woman who posted it. Some netizens started paying attention to this post. Composed at the college entrance examination question setting team location? Then how did you get your hands on it? Yeah, isn't that a private place that's closed off to the public? There shouldn't even be any form of communication allowed there. This must be fake then? Clickbait? The OP might be a staff member of the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board? That's possible. Let me take a look at this poem. A. It's quite well written. Yes, it's written well with a suitable mood to it. Was this really written by Zhong Yi? It doesn't feel like it. I thought that Zhong Yi's poems were always earth-shaking. This piece is good, but it doesn't carry any impact to it. It's definitely clickbait, it's confirmed. A mystery? What mystery? Many of the netizens did not believe this was real as there were too many liars and rumors going around. When the woman who posted on Weibo saw that everyone was doubting the veracity of her post, she replied with an update. Whether you believe this was written by John Yi or not, just try reading the poem backwards and you'll know. Other than him, no one else could compose a poem like it. Ah. Uh, read it backwards? Ha ha. This is the first time I've heard of a poem that can be read backwards. Let me give it a try. In the next moment, countless people were totally amazed. Holy F asterisk asterisk K. Holy F asterisk asterisk K. Your sister. This can really be read backwards. This was really composed by Zhong Yi. I know this. It's a palindrome poem. It was very rare even in the ancient times. Even among the palindrome poems that were passed down from antiquity, there aren't many that can be considered poetic and can rhyme as well as this one. Why did John Yi write this poem? A husband's and wife's mutual sod aid? What does this mean? The woman who posted the Weibo post explained, I heard that the teachers were having a celebratory feast and there was a contest. Someone had challenged John Yi to use the theme of husband and wife to compose a poem. Then, without even thinking, Zhong Yi composed this piece straight away with a brush and one. Heavens! How informative! This is too godly. The deep, ancient knowledge of literature of China is really broad and profound. If you didn't mention it, I wouldn't even have known that there was such a thing as palindrome poems. Too awesome! Hearing this explanation from the OP, I would definitely believe that this was a work by Zhong Yi. Someone issued a challenge and Zhong Yi took it on with a palindrome poem? That's totally that guy's style. Face smacking Zhong has gone on to smack faces again. Your sister, teacher Zhong has been held in the mountains yet he can't stay idle for a moment and has gone on a face smacking spree again. Foot, that's right. The name of face smacking Zhong is not for nothing. Even if teacher Zhong were to be launched to the moon, I reckon he would still find the means to smack some faces. No one can stop the march of face smacking Jong. Ha ha ha, why is it that a poem that is so sorrowful can be twisted into something by you all that I'm crying from laughter? Teacher Jong is impressive. Jong Yi is indeed Jong Yi. Fully deserving of his reputation. Jong Yi's poem is not only good in that setting, even the technique he used is a very high level one. It can be seen that this is just child's play to Jong Yi. Composing a poem is mere child's play to him since he can do it so easily and elegantly. When this Weibo post was forwarded and viewed multiple times, more and more people started paying attention to it and the number of comments also increasingly soared. Very soon, a husband's and wife's mutual sodade palindrome poem was broken down and analyzed. Word by word, the details were put under the microscope and picked apart. The more they researched, the deeper they got, and the more people saw its ingenuity. They were increasingly feeling more and more amazed at how incredulous it was. However, there was a big group of people who did not care about this at all. It was the Beijing College entrance examinees. What palindrome poem, so what? All I care about right now is how difficult this year's Beijing College entrance exam will be. Seeing this a husband's and wife's mutual sodade palindrome poem by Zhong Yi, I suddenly get a feeling of being screwed. If he can even compose such a difficult poem, then how can the questions he set be simple? 
I'm giving up all hope. It might not turn out to be that way. Everyone, let's not be so pessimistic. Right, John Yee's not the only question setter anyway, even if does set some questions, how many can questions can he write? As long as we can get the other questions correct, then the score wouldn't differ by much. That sounds logical. Hopefully. But I have an ominous feeling about this. F asterisk asterisk K, me too, I better go and revise my algebraic geometry again. I'm going offline, bye. I'm going offline too. One day. Three days. Five days. In the blink of an eye, the annual college entrance examination was here again. Chapter 709, the first day of the exam is over. At the end of June. It was the first day of the college entrance exam. The sun was already blazing early in the morning, making the Beijing weather extremely hot and sunny. Under the soaring temperatures, the examinees and their parents were all densely packed at the entrance of every examination venue in the province. There were traffic cops stationed at each of the nearby junctions of the examination venues to maintain order and regulate the traffic flow, keeping traffic smooth to the fullest extent. Some of the exam venues even had an ambulance on standby to handle any emergencies. Everything was given careful consideration to the examinees. Today was not only a big day for the examinees but also an important one the whole society was very concerned with. News related to the college entrance examination had been published all over the place by the media and newspapers since a few days ago. Drivers are advised to keep clear of the schools that are designated as examination venues. Cheering for the examinees to do well. Reforming the Beijing college entrance exam, difficulty likely to be greatly increased. At a certain examination venue. Please produce your exam admission pass. Here. All right, you may proceed inside. Mom, I'm going in. Little Ying, do your best, don't be nervous. Okay Mom, you should go home first. Mom's not leaving. I'll be waiting for you outside. Similar scenes were happening at the entrance of every exam venue. The parents of the examinees all appeared to feel nervous and uneasy. Meanwhile, the students all had different expressions, some looked like they were not affected, some looked extremely worried. Some were smiling brightly, and some were expressionless, as each person carried their books and did some last-minute revision. Of course, there were also no lack of discussion by the examinees on the difficulty on the exam. I heard that the questions for this year's exam are extremely difficult. Ari, I'm also quite worried. I really hope it isn't going to be difficult. It would be nice if they followed the previous standard of difficulty, why must they reform it no matter what? Let's see how it turns out with the English language test first. Hocus pocus, can it be simpler for us? The first subject to be taken was the English language test. The college entrance examination subject sequence and timing of the sections of this world were somewhat different from Zhong Yi's previous world. Not only was the exam held at the end of June, the sequence for the first day's morning was the English language test, followed by the arts and the science tests in the afternoon. The second day's schedule would be for the Chinese literature and mathematics tests. Moreover, like the mathematics test of this world, be it the standardized national test or those independent, provincial level tests, the mathematics test was not separated into the arts or science subjects, but as a standalone subject. 8.40 a.m., the examinees take their seats. 9 a.m., the English language exam officially commences. The first section is a listening test. With the broadcast of the listening test, it raised the curtains for yet another year of the National College Entrance Examination. One question. Five questions. Ten questions. The examinees began their battle with their heads lowered, wearing serious expressions on their faces. Time passed bit by bit. When the bell signaling the end of the examination rang, countless examinees heaved sighs of relief. After submitting their papers, they began discussing the questions as they walked out of the exam venue. Immediately, their parents surrounded them. How was it? Did you do well, little Chi? Is the English language test difficult? It's more difficult than last year's, but only slightly. The difficulty was more or less the same compared to our second mock exam. It's still fine and not as difficult as I had imagined. Right, I also feel that it's all right. They just increased the difficulty on the listening test. 
Mom, I did quite well. I can definitely get a high score this time. That's great, Mom will take you to a nice restaurant. I want to eat grilled fish. The majority of the Beijing examinees felt that the difficulty of the examination questions were still quite acceptable, and many of them seemed like they had fared quite well. Everyone left with their parents with smiles on their faces. Later that afternoon, the second half of examination commenced. The arts students were taking the arts test while the science students took the science test. Because the papers for the arts and science subjects made up most of the points allocation and covered a greater scope, the examination questions were also more complicated. That was why the examinees did not dare take it too lightly and went into the examination venue with caution. But when the examinees completed the tests, it turned out that many of them had smiles on their faces instead. At some of the examination venues, quite a number of candidates even handed in their papers early. It seemed like they had completed the exam quite smoothly. When they left the examination venue, those who bumped into their classmates immediately started discussing. What was your answer to the fifth question? I chose A. Ha ha, looks like I got the question correct by chance. The science test was quite acceptable this time. That's right, I thought it would be very difficult. But the difficulty was still increased by a little, like the physics section. Yes, the difficulty of the physics section was increased. I didn't even understand the last major question on the test, but it's all right, I wasn't even planning to answer that question anyway. I had given up on it right from the beginning. I guess not too many people will be able to answer that. A, Wang Shui, you're also at this examination venue. I just saw you, how was your arts test? It was all right. It wasn't that difficult, right? The political science test was quite difficult as the questions were worded quite trickily. The others were all right and many of the questions were modified to a different style of questioning. Actually, they were similar to those that we did in the mock exam previously and a majority of them were gimme questions. As long as we used a more flexible train of thought to analyze and answer the questions, there wasn't much of a difference from the past Beijing exams. That's right, this difficulty level is just right. Aren't the newspapers constantly reporting that the Beijing college entrance exam is undergoing a reform? Ha ha, I don't see much of a reform at all. To think that I was so worried about it previously. That's right, they totally exaggerated it. I also got a fright at that time, but it turned out to not be a big deal. Bye, I'll go home now to prepare for tomorrow's tests. The first day of the exam was over. Many of the Beijing examinees went home joyfully with their parents and their faces beaming. On the same night, the answers to the English language, science and arts tests appeared on the internet. These answers were not released by the official authorities, but were compiled by the teachers from the high schools who answered the questions one by one themselves, and posted them online for the examinees to compare with their own answers. An English teacher from the Beijing Normal University affiliated high school posted on Weibo. The difficulty of the listening test has clearly become more difficult, but the rest of the test was still within our expectations. A teacher of number 15 high school, there were not too many difficult questions in the science test. A teacher of number 14 high school, the difficulty for the tests this time was average as there were some changes from past questions that were set, but were not obvious. A teacher of number 8 high school, the exam reform is going slowly with a trial and error approach, so we cannot expect overnight results. Some of the questions for the Beijing exam this time were very eye-catching and original, but whether the questions were difficult or not was secondary. There were many different opinions and views, as everyone discussed fervently about this topic. In the end, even the Beijing media came forward to post, reforming the Beijing college entrance exams. The thunder was loud, but the rain was light? In contrast, the examinees from the other provinces did not have it as easy as the Beijing examinees. Hi, it isn't easy this year either. That's right, it's about the same compared with last year's exams. The English language test was too difficult as there was too much new vocabulary I had never even heard of before. Everyone, quickly take a look at the Beijing tests. It seems like it's still as easy as before. Weren't they intending to reform it? I don't know. Anyway, I know how to do all those questions. F asterisk asterisk K, it's true. If I were given the Beijing exam, I would be able to get more than 500 points on my college entrance exam. 
Your sister. Looks like the examinees living in the Imperial City are having a more blissful life. I envy them so much. In my next life, I also want to be born in Beijing. Chapter 710, The Most Difficult Exam in History. The next day. The college entrance exam ushered in the second, and last, day of the examination. The subject for the day's morning's examination was the Chinese literature test followed by the mathematics test in the afternoon. It was not even 8 a.m. yet, but many of the examinees were already outside the exam venues accompanied by their parents. Have you brought along all your exam items? Yes, I brought them all. Exam admission pass, ID card, pens and pencils? They're all inside my bag. Do your best today and just keep up your good work. Of course, Dad. I feel like I could get at least 550 points in this exam. Are you serious? That high? It's because the questions were not too difficult. If you think it's easy, then others will also find it easy too. Everyone might end up with very high scores in the end. When that happens, the cutoff points for admissions in Beijing will also increase accordingly. The result will be the same, that's why today is the crucial moment. Don't let your guard down, make the best of the easy questions to get more marks, and don't make any careless mistakes. Understood. Elsewhere. How did you fare yesterday? It was very good. I also did quite well. This year's college entrance exam didn't seem like the big deal they made it to be. Hee <laughs> hee, I'm going to the internet cafe tonight. You wanna come? Let's go. Of course I want to. After working so hard for the past year, I can finally enjoy playing games again. Man, there are still two subjects left, let's focus on the exam first. It's nothing. With that standard of difficulty in the English language and science tests yesterday? I'm feeling very confident about it. Heh, that's very true. From the conversations, the mood and mentality of the Beijing examinees were very telling. More than half of them came to the examination venues today with confidence, and were calmer after having experienced their first tests of the college entrance exam yesterday. Many of them who originally were scared of the college entrance examination had become indifferent as the difficulty of the English language test had given them confidence for today. The remaining half of the examinees still maintained their alertness and nervousness as they felt that yesterday's tests were too simple, and probably the two tests today would be slightly more difficult. On top of that, these two tests were set by the famous Zhong Yi. That was why some of the examinees definitely did not dare underestimate the questions. Very soon, it was time for the examination to begin. At the examination venue at number 4 High School, in an examination hall on the second floor. A plump and a thin examinee were whispering to each other. They were not from the same school and probably only got to know each other yesterday. Fatty, how was your English language test? I won't get fewer than 100 points. Whoa, you're that awesome. What about you, skinny? I won't get fewer than 110 points. Huh, can you stop bragging? I'm not bragging. If you don't believe me, let's compare whose Chinese literature test will score higher. This subject is my forte. Moreover, the Beijing Chinese literature test has always been very easy every year. It will be different this year since they're pushing reforms on the college entrance exam. Reform, my ass. You should have already gotten an idea when you saw yesterday's exams. How difficult can the tests get? Sure, then let's compare whose score is higher. If I can demonstrate my fullest potential, I can probably score 115 points and above. Then I will score 120 points. F asterisk asterisk K, I will score 125 points. Then I will score 130 points. At this moment, a female proctor stared at the two of them and said, stop whispering to each other. The exams will be distributed soon. The two of them immediately shut their mouths. In the next second, the examinees were passing the exams backward. Once the tests were in their hands, everyone immediately picked up their pens and started answering the questions. The plump examinee rubbed his hands together and had a look of concentration on his face. The thin examinee was also smiling as he prepared to attempt the questions. However, after just a moment, the entire batch of examinees in the exam hall suddenly fell silent. 
it seemed that even the sound of scribbling had disappeared and the atmosphere abruptly became strange. A proctor glanced at them curiously. Quickly answer your questions. Answer our questions? Answer your sister. The plump examinee was stunned. The thin examinee was also stunned. The entire hall of examinees were all stunned. They had just began attempting five questions before they got stuck. They felt that they could not continue any more. Some people felt like they were about to vomit blood as they stared with their eyes wide, looking down at the next few questions. As a result, they found out that after every few questions, there would be a question that was so difficult that it would make people feel like they wanted to die. For example, this question, Confucius and Lousy are fighting, who will you help? Help your second granny. How could these two old men get into a fight? Besides, even if the two of them really got into a fight, how could I help? No matter who I helped, I will get F asterisk asterisk king beaten up. Come on, they were both sages. At this moment, all the examinees' hearts froze. Score 120 points. Score 130 points. Both the plump and thin examinees could no longer boast any more at this moment. Their faces turned green. Many of them couldn't help but swear, F asterisk asterisk K, what the F asterisk asterisk K are these questions? F asterisk asterisk K, which F asterisk asterisk King Bastard's grandson wrote these questions? The proctor felt strange about everyone's reaction and was wondering why everyone was looking so baffled. Then she also looked down and flipped through the spare exams. After she saw the questions, the female proctor also became confused and was totally stunned at that moment. She was also a Chinese literature teacher, but in all her life of teaching Chinese literature lessons, she had never come across such questions before or even heard of similar ones. Even if she tried to attempt some of the questions herself now, she did not know how she would begin to answer the questions. The same scenes were happening at every examination venue. Some of the examinees even double facepalmed. While some of them stared unblinkingly with stunned faces. Without needing to think much, many of them had already come to a conclusion. John Yi. This question was definitely F asterisk asterisk king written by John Yi. Besides this bastard, no one else could possibly come up with such a wicked question. It was definitely that person trying to lead them into a trap. They seemed to know Zhong Yi's style quite well. These extremely difficult questions in the Beijing Chinese literature test were in fact all set by Zhong Yi. For example, the question of Confucius and Laozi are fighting was actually sourced from Zhong Yi's previous world when Tsinghua University held its own admissions test, which could also be considered as a sort of college entrance exam question. The question itself was considered to be open-ended and could be freely answered as there wasn't a perfect answer. Confucius and Laozi were both people of a certain status, so it wasn't likely for them to get into a fight. Laozi spoke of the way, Dao, while Confucius pushed Ruism. When Confucius was born, Laozi had left society. From the perception of ideology or conduct, there were too many ways to approach and analyze this question. One, however, it was easy to say but hard to do. This question had truly stumped all of the Beijing examinees. On top of that, this was still only the beginning as there were more of these similarly wicked questions waiting for them in the later parts of the test, each one of them trickier and more difficult than the other. Time passed by quickly. Put down your pens. It's time to hand in your papers. Teacher, I haven't finished answering yet. You can't continue to write any more. Come on, please let me write a little more. Every examination venue was defeated on all fronts, with many of the examinees wailing. When they came out from the examination halls, the examinees did not even know how they could describe their current feelings. Son, what happened? Dad, I blew it. Ah? How can that be? It was too difficult. The Chinese literature test was too difficult. Close by were some examinees who were already cursing and swearing. John Yi. It must be him. That guy is wicked all the way to his grandma's house. What an inhumane person. I don't care whether Confucius and Laozi are fighting or not. I only know that if John Yi were standing in front of me right now, he would definitely get beaten up by a bunch of people. I've never come across such difficult Chinese literature questions before. Is this even the college entrance exam? 
Why do I feel like it's an exam for postgrad students instead? I'm done for. It would already be very good if I can manage to pass this time. Me too, I've totally screwed it up. I didn't give an answer for quite a number of the questions. I totally had no idea how to even start answering them. It's really a reform of the exam. This reform is too harsh. All of a sudden, the difficulty has been increased several fold. In the afternoon, many of the Beijing Chinese literature exam questions had already been leaked and were quickly spreading on the internet. The questions became famous almost immediately as they were widely spread by everyone. When the netizens saw this, they expressed their shock. Holy shit! These questions, luckily I'm not involved in this year's college entrance exam. Thankfully, I didn't repeat my studies last year. Otherwise, if I encountered these questions, I wouldn't even know how I died. Why are they so difficult? Did all of the Beijing examinees get wiped out? Who could even answer them? Who was the person who wrote these questions? That was too damaging. After looking through the questions, many netizens and examinees from the other provinces very nearly fainted as well. With this, the examinees from the other provinces were no longer envious of the Beijing examinees or wishing they were born in the imperial city in their next lives anymore. These questions were so f asterisk asterisk king difficult that it was clearly not meant for anyone to attempt. Some teachers also posted online. A Chinese literature teacher of Yutsai High School, I'm also stunned with some of the questions. I don't see how I can get full marks for them. Today's Chinese literature test was totally beyond our imagination. A head of department at the Chinese Literature Department of Beijing Normal University Affiliated High School, this Chinese literature test is probably the most difficult test in the history of the Beijing College Entrance Exam. But if you were to say that the difficulty of the test has gone overboard? That is also not the case. All the questions were set within the scope of the topic, just that the approach of the questions were quite different from usual. They needed the examinees to have a very strong sense of logic and good at expressing the language to be able to answer them well. The exam questions were actually set in a very interesting manner, and could be approached from several directions, thus testing the examinees' overall ability. News was flying all around in the mainstream media publications of Beijing. The Beijing Chinese Literature Test, the reform that drew first blood. The Beijing Chinese Literature Test, rated the most difficult exam in history by the experts. The examinees believe about more than 10 of the difficult questions were set by Zhang Yi. Reporters have inquired with the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board but received no comment and need further verification. The Beijing Chinese Literature Test creates a shock with its godly question. The Beijing examinees have fared badly at most parts of the Chinese literature test. Examinees' parents curse at the question setter. Then, very quickly, in just the short duration of the afternoon break between the exams, the godly question and some godly answers in reply to it were published one by one. For example, the question about Confucius and Laozi. Many of the examinees had posted their answers online. It was not known whether they were answering seriously or was just ridiculing the question. Chen Feng 2001, I will help Confucius because Laozi knows Tai Chi. Dash J, I will help whomever the question setter helps. Little Butterfly CC, I will not help anyone but call 110 to inform the police immediately. A Beast 317, I will not help either of them. First, I will go and mediate for them. After I manage to calm Confucius and Laozi down, the three of us will proceed to beat Zhong Yi up together. The last answer resonated with many of the examinees. Many of the examination candidates were shouting on Weibo at Zhong Yi, Teacher Zhong Yi, show yourself. We promise that we will not beat you to death. Chapter 711, a difficulty that brings the examinees to tears. On Weibo. A lot of celebrities also joined in the fun. A C-list female singer commented, Hi, why are the college entrance exams Chinese literature questions so difficult these days? If my college entrance exam was like the one they have now, I probably wouldn't have qualified for university at all. Chen Guang, director Zhong has once again angered the masses. Yao Jiantsai, haha, little Zhong is totally out for the kill. Let's see what will happen to him after he gets down from the hills. The Beijing examinees will probably come out in force to get him. Fan Wenli, Pfut, these questions amuse me. 
Dong Shanshan, Zhong Yi's thinking is forever different from others. Chen Guang, actually, it is not Zhong Yi's fault at all. It was the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board who wanted to reform the exam, so they got him precisely because they wanted him to set the most difficult questions amid all the pressure. Otherwise, what was the point in getting him? Fortunately, the exams are all the same, so the difficulty applies to everyone. If you can't do it, then it's likely other people won't be able to do it either. That will average out the curve and it will be down to a fight over every examinee's standard themselves, so there isn't any unfairness since it's the same for everyone. Though it was put in this way. And it sounded very logical as well. But the examinees did not think in such a way. Many of them already hated Zhong Yi to the core, kicking up a fuss on the internet. Someone even called for a crusade against Zhong Yi team to be started. Good idea. Count me in. This is numbing, I'm going to join the crusade as well. I swear to take it all the way to the end with face smacking Zhong. Face smacking Zhong is totally screwing with us all. Wait till we finish our math exam. When we finish our exam. Our knives must surely be stained with Zhong Yi's blood. I won't be playing games or relaxing anymore tonight, I will constantly be criticizing him online. Warriors, count me in. Many of these people's fighting spirits were soaring high. However, an even greater number of people did not have the mind to think about such things. They were more concerned with the afternoon's mathematics test. The Chinese literature test was already incredibly bad. What will the math test be like? I can't even imagine. Zhong Yi's the lead question setter for the math test. God, just let me die. The college entrance exam is too horrible. At this moment, an online media outlet published an analysis report, with the Chinese literature test over, the Beijing examinees are left wailing. The Chinese literature test's questions were too difficult and had far exceeded the difficulty in known history. However, if we see this from a different perspective, there might be a possibility that the math test will be easier. Could there be such a possibility of this happening? It can't be that both the Chinese literature and mathematics test are the most difficult in the history of the national college entrance exam, right? Then what kind of scores are the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board even intending to let our Beijing examinees get? Would 400 points be counted as high? If everyone's score is low, then the admissions cutoff score would slide down greatly. Is it likely that one doesn't even need 400 points to get admitted into Tsinghua University? That's impossible. Following that, many teachers and education industry insiders also commented with their own analysis and judgments. Many of them were also authoritative figures. An industry insider posted, the current estimate for the Beijing examinee's average score for the Chinese literature test is not likely to exceed 75 points, and could be lower. It has to be mentioned that last year's average score for the same paper was 103 points, so if the mathematics test's difficulty is increased, then the tier 1 scores might really end up shrinking down to just around 400 points. That is not a very realistic outcome. A national exam question setter posted, the difficulty level of this year's Beijing mathematics test is likely to be moderate or just slightly above average. The experts gave their analysis from all kinds of perspectives and made good arguments to support their views. The examinees were all excited by these comments that were posted. That's right. The analysis seems very logical. The math test shouldn't be more difficult than the Chinese literature test. Well said. That's great, I'm feeling relieved now. Charge. There's only the last subject left now. Later that afternoon. As the timing approached, it was also time for the last subject to be examined for this year's college entrance examination. Mathematics. Having experienced the wake-up call from this morning's Chinese literature test, many of the examinees were dealt a severe blow, especially having gone through yesterday's level of the English, Arts, and Science tests, the level of difficulty for today's paper was made even more obvious. It was like the difference between the sky and earth. Some of the examinees had not even came back to their senses from the disaster of the morning's test, and were already arriving back to the examination venue in the accompaniment of their parents. They were still unsettled. There was still anger over the level of difficulty. It was like this for the examinees and their parents alike. Son, it's the last subject. I know, mom. 
the Chinese literature test is already over. It doesn't matter what we say about it anymore, so just focus and score well on your math test to make up for your Chinese literature test score. I will. Are you confident? Yes. That's my son, go get M. Beside them, another parent was also advising their child. Daughter, I just read on the internet that many of the experts have already analyzed and concurred that the math test is not going to be too difficult, so don't worry about it. Ah? Really? It's true. It's what the experts have claimed, how can it be wrong? They said that the difficulty level for the math test is likely to be moderate or just slightly above average. That's great to hear. Around them, quite a few parents and examinees who heard this came over to ask. Will it really not be difficult? Yes, the media reports also analyzed it as such. You all can check the internet if you don't believe. Who, it nearly scared me to death. It's good as long as it's not difficult. I was so scared that my legs were trembling. Then I had better score higher on the math test. I need to claw back the points I lost in the Chinese literature exam. Right. Wow, the reports online really analyzed it that way. It's supported by so many experts too. Let me see, let me see. Ha ha, I'm not worried anymore now. That's exactly what I was thinking. The Chinese literature test was already super difficult, so the math test can't possibly be as difficult too. It was almost time to start the last test. The examinees had all gone into the examination venues. Those who had seen the analysis presented by the media and experts had all regained quite a bit of their confidence. They held their pens firmly, in preparation to do well on all the questions. However, as it turned out, after the mathematics test was handed out, when the examinees saw the multi-line questions on it, they were all left looking flabbergasted. Some people gasped. Some people covered their faces and let out a silent scream. Some people turned pale. There were even some who held the exam in their trembling hands. Question 3, if the complex number Z satisfies the equation Z, 2, 3i, equals 6 plus 4i, where i is the imaginary unit, then the modulus of Z is underscore 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 underscore. Question 9, there are three small balls of similar size in a box. One of them is a black ball. If two balls are randomly picked from the box, what is the probability of the two balls being different in color? Question 13, to better understand the quality of a batch of cotton, a cotton mill randomly extracted 100 lengths of cotton fiber. The length of a cotton fiber is an important indicator of the quality of cotton. The resulting data falls between 5, 40. Its appearance frequency is indicated in the distribution histogram below. Image, in the sampling of 100 lengths of fiber, there are underscore 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 lengths that are shorter than 20 millimeters. Question 15, in the Chinese literature and mathematics subjects, the results are graded into three tiers of either, excellent, pass, or, fail. Assuming student A's results are all not lower than student B's, with at least one subject scoring better than student B's, then the statement, student A's results are better than student B's, is valid. If among some students no one scored better than each other, and neither did any two students score the same points as another, with their mathematics results also not the same. Then, what is the maximum number of students that fulfill the conditions? What kind of questions were these? Just what kind of damned questions were these? Don't even mention solving these questions. Just looking at them alone was enough to make half of the examinees vomit blood. Some of the more outstanding mathematics students were already covered with sweat, trying their hardest to understand the questions. There were also some some who were weaker in the subject who had already laid down their weapon and given up on answering. F asterisk CK your grandpa. Who the hell said that the mathematics exam questions would not be too difficult? Who the heck said that the mathematics exam questions were going to be moderate to slightly above average in difficulty? Those who said so should come look at this for themselves. Is this F asterisk asterisk king moderate to slightly above average in difficulty? Is this not too difficult? Only at this moment did the examinees realize that they had been scammed by those media reports, and experts who had sounded so confident with their arguments. The mathematics test was totally not like how they had predicted it to be. In fact, this was even more difficult than the Chinese literature test by at least two times. 
at least they could still read and understand the questions in the Chinese literature test. But for some of the questions in the mathematics test, even after staring at it for forever, they could not begin to understand the question whatsoever. The people of this world definitely did not know where these questions originated from. Only Zhong Yi knew that these multifaceted questions had all come from the past years of college entrance exams of every province in his previous world. There were questions from the 2014 Beijing College Entrance Exam, the 2009 National College Entrance Exam, and also the 2010 Jian. Xu College Entrance Exam, whose claim to fame was being the most difficult examination in the college entrance examination history. All of these questions were gathered and chosen by Zhong Yi to be used for this world's Beijing College Entrance Examinations Mathematics test this year. The difficulty of it was something that one could not even begin to imagine. However, this was not Zhong Yi intentionally trying to find issue with the examinees. He was just doing as instructed by the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board who had requested for the most difficult questions he could come up with. They fully had the intention to reform the exam and Zhong Yi had no objections to this. Whatever the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board wanted, he would just give to them. His job was only to write the questions. Nothing else mattered to him. The bell sounded to signal the end of the exam. The mathematics test had ended. At that moment, the curtain was drawn on the annual National College Entrance Examination. Jinxia. At an examination venue. Granddaughter. Granddaughter. Granny, I finished my exam. Did you do well? I did okay. I just didn't manage to finish the last major question. All right then, let's go home. Granny will cook a sumptuous meal for you. Beha province. We're finally free. Ha ha ha. When I get home, I want to sleep soundly for three days and three nights. I want to play video games. Play them for three days straight. It will definitely be very enjoyable. Oh. We're free. Jiangnan province. Today's examination wasn't too difficult. Yeah, it was easier than last year's. I counted. My points will definitely qualify me for tier 1. University, here I come. Me too, the math test was so easy. The entire country's examinees were finally set free at this moment. Many of them had left their examination venues laughing, even those who did not do well or performed as ideally as they wanted. Since the dust had settled, they were now totally relaxed and could finally make their way home to their families. However, there was a place where it was different. The reactions of the examinees in this municipality was different from all the other places. Beijing. After the college entrance examination was over, at the end of the last exam subject. Outside many of the examination venues, other than the sight of many anxiously waiting parents, there were also many media reporters who had arrived. Some of the reporters even arrived in their press vehicles, probably preparing to do an episode covering the topic or getting the footage ready for tonight's news report. Ah, they're coming out. Quickly, the cameras. They're coming out. The exam is over. The parents and reporters were all crowded outside the entrance. However, their expected reactions of the examinees exiting the venues with excitement did not happen. Yes, not a single one of them did that. Everyone just walked out slowly and silently with a sense of heaviness. They all looked like they had been through a tough battle or seemed like they had just been beaten up. The parents were getting anxious. What's wrong? Little Yi, what's going on? What happened? Juju, why aren't you talking? How was the exam, baby? Say something at least. Suddenly. A thin and weak-looking boy walking right in the front started crying loudly after hearing his parents asking him about the exam. It was too damn difficult. With this cry, a few female examinees behind him also started shedding tears. A girl was crying while yelling out, John Yi. I can't live while you do. You're my sworn enemy. Sob sob sob. The parents were stunned. The reporters were also shocked. F asterisk asterisk K. Just what kind of a mathematics test was it for this year's Beijing College Entrance Examination? Why did some of the examinees even breaking down in tears over it? Just how difficult was it? 
Meanwhile, at the other examination venues in Beijing, similar scenes were playing out as well. Many of the examinees had exited from their examination venues in tears, crying while cursing all 18 generations of ancestors of this year's college entrance examinations question setting team. If the Chinese literature test had caused them to cry out loudly before, then this mathematics test was the one that had extinguished all their remaining hope. Even a few examinees who usually did very well at mathematics and scored highly in their classes came out of the venue in tears. They had never used swear words despite the many years at school, but when they walked out of the examination venue this time, they could be heard loudly swearing, they better not let us find out which bastard wrote those questions. Chapter 712, Down with John Yi. Each time the college entrance examination was held, there would always be examinees who passed and failed. Some of them would do poorly, but there were others who did well in the examination. But looking at the situation now? Did everyone end up doing badly this time? Did everyone meet their doom at the mathematics test? But no matter how difficult the test was, it couldn't be that not even one of them did well, right? There would surely be some straight-A student who could do well on this exam, but no matter where they searched and looked, why were all the examinees showing the same expression? A father and his son were talking. Son, haven't you always done well at math? It was too difficult. The questions were way too difficult. How many did you manage to get correct? I don't know. I had to resort to guessing just to solve the questions. How could that be? Just what kinds of questions did you get? Dad, if I can get 50 points on my math test this time, I would be more than happy. What? You've always managed to get no fewer than 90 points in math. You even managed to score 99 points on one of the mock exams. Why would it be so bad this time? This doesn't reflect your aptitude at all. When another examinee heard that, he said, just be contented with that. Lazy can still score 50 points, but if I can score 40 points, I would already be extremely satisfied. I did not write a single word for my answers to the last three major questions. I couldn't even understand what the questions were asking. Several of the reporters' eyes met each other's, but they could not believe what they had just heard. They could believe that a question could not be answered since difficult questions did exist, but for the candidate to even not understand the questions? They clearly could not believe it. As a result, those reporters tried to obtain some of the math questions by interviewing a few examinees who recounted to them from memory. Upon writing out and seeing the questions, those reporters instantly felt dizzy. Brother Liu, can you understand the questions? What about you? Me? I don't get it at all. F asterisk asterisk K, me too. Damn, is this question even meant for us humans? It seems like the question setting team is really out to kill everyone. Very soon, quite a few news reports were published. Darkness befalls the second day of the Beijing college entrance exams. Difficulty level of the Chinese literature and math tests goes off the charts. The end of the college entrance exam, students leave the exam venues in tears. The math exam questions exposed, check if you can solve these questions. Never before in history. Difficulty of exam questions brings examinees to tears. Many of the photos taken outside of the exam venues were also posted. In the photos, it could be clearly seen that the headlines of brings examinees to tears was not just a figure of speech. The examinees had really been brought to tears by the difficulty level. Elsewhere. When the exam was over, the internet blew up with comments. The angered Beijing examinees invaded Weibo, Chieba, and a few of the larger online forums, shouting, together in unison. Examinee Little Wang, fairy tales are just lies. They're all lies. No. Three high school Wu Fei, teacher, why didn't it turn out according to the way we discussed? Number four high school examinee, it's not that I'm bad at math, but that the enemy is too crafty. Beijing Normal University Affiliated High School Examinee. Who were the people who listed out the reasons one by one before deducing that the math test wouldn't be too difficult? Show yourself. If I don't beat you to death, I will take on your last name. Number 8 High School Examinee. After finishing the Chinese literature test, I felt that my heart was crushed. But after finishing the math test, I felt like my balls were crushed. Balls crushed as well. Balls crushed as well plus one. 
Balls crushed as well plus 99999. A student from number 63 high school, dear juniors, if next year's Beijing Chinese literature and math tests become easier, please remember us. Please remember us, because that was exchanged with the sacrificed blood of your predecessors, your seniors, us. Don't thank me, just call me the unwilling red scarf. The examinees from the other provinces had gathered to watch. Scratching my head in confusion. Brothers and sisters who took part in the Beijing College Entrance Exam, it's been hard on you all. I've seen your math exam questions, all I want to say is, you're all glorious warriors. Come on, stay strong. Whoever gets those questions would not be able to answer them either. The Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board has really gone big this time. Let's see how they will handle the situation later on. Zhang Yi's such a wicked fellow. Those questions must have been set by him. We're lucky that our province's Higher Education Entrance Examination Board did not invite this fellow to join them. Otherwise, the ones to be sacrificed this year would surely have been us. Just thinking about it gives me the shivers. Whoever gets involved with a question setter like Zhang Yi who does not play his cards logically is surely down on their luck. Zhang Yi is the scourge itself. When he was at the radio station, he fought the entire radio station system. Then when he went to the television station, he fought the television station's leader. At the university, he went against the education world. When he got into the crawstalk industry, he fought against the crawstalk world. Now, he has even come to destroy the higher education entrance examination system. The Beijing examinees were cursing. The examinees' parents were complaining. The entire society's attention had suddenly turned its focus to the Beijing college entrance exams. The Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board, the question-setting teams, Zhong Yi, all of these parties were thrust to the forefront of discussions. Not long after, a call to severely punish the question setter was making rounds across the internet. Countless Beijing examinees and their parents were participating in it, while the examinees from the other provinces also joined in to show their support. This new wave of dissent once again turned the internet upside down as it caused a great deal of commotion. Where is Zhong Yi at? Zhong Yi, where are you? Hand that man over. Down with Zhong Yi. Revenge for the examinees. Down with the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board. Justice for the examinees. The shouts came wave after wave, continuously. At another place. Zhong Yi's parents' house. Dong dong dong, dong dong dong. There was someone knocking on the door outside. His parents and Chen Chen were at home staring at the computer for news related to the Beijing college entrance exam. When she heard that someone was at the door, his mother went over and opened it. Who is it? Outside, Zhong Yi stepped into the house. Who else could it be? His mother was surprised for a moment. Why are you home? Zhong Yi laughed. The college entrance exam is already over. If I don't come back, where would I go? Do you prefer that I stay in the hills? Heh, let me say this, I was bored out of my mind when I was there. It's always the woods that I see when I open my eyes. Just look at all these marks on my body, I got these bites from the mosquitoes and bugs. There's too many of those in the hills. His mother said, get into the house quickly, I will get you some essential balm. Zhong Yi was in a rather good mood. It's fine, I've already applied some. Then he walked into the living room and saw his father with Chen Chen. Dad, you're not working today? Chen Chen, do you miss uncle? Chen Chen glanced at him. Ha ha. Zhong Yi smiled and said, ha ha means you did. Then he asked, Dad, did this little rascal cause any trouble in our home? Chen Chen pouted. His father looked at his son. You're still worried about whether Chen Chen caused any trouble? I think the trouble that you've caused is much greater. Just look at this, it's a total mess online. The examinees and their parents are all scolding you. You're really asking for it. Just stick to setting the questions, why did you have to make them so difficult? Zhong Yi said, who's scolding me? His mother followed up, see for yourself. No one is not scolding you. Zhong Yi went over to the computer and had a look. 
It was really true, his Weibo account had received countless mention notifications and all of them were talking about, ridding evil for the people. Zhong Yi was already sweating at the sight of this and suddenly plucked Chen Chen out of the chair, she was sitting on and then sat himself in front of the computer. He logged into Weibo and quickly posted a message. Zhong Yi, everyone, cool down. If it was difficult, then it would have been difficult for everyone. If the scores are low because of this, then everyone's score will also be low. It is actually all the same and your college admission won't be affected. In this world, it was quite common for students to be admitted into universities. Out of 10 examinees, more than half would qualify for university. That was why the difficulty of the questions wouldn't have affected their chances by much, unless the examinees did very badly on the overall exam. That portion of the examinees who did not achieve a good enough result still wouldn't have scored well, whether or not the questions were difficult. They still wouldn't have qualified for university, so there wasn't really much of a difference. However, the examinees were having none of it. When they saw Zhong Yi's Weibo status light up, all of the Beijing examinees swarmed over. That Zhong guy has appeared online. Your sister, how dare you still appear? Everyone, come and gather quickly. The culprit has appeared. Down with Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi, we've all been screwed big time because of you. What kind of lousy questions of yours are those? When Zhong Yi showed up, he was immediately besieged by countless people. Zhong Yi was didn't know how to react. He coughed and then composed himself and posted onto Weibo like a boss, why are you all scolding me? The questions were not set by me, they were set by Dean Pan Young of Peking University. Dad. Mom. Chen Chen. Su Ene's Weibo. A Peking University teacher who was also on the question setting team. At a certain house. Pan Yang came home totally worn out and had just taken a sip of tea before he started browsing through the internet on his computer. Instead, he saw the Weibo message posted by Zhong Yi, and after reading it, he nearly lost his balance. He spat out his tea. He had not expected Zhong Yi to pin the blame on him to make him the scapegoat. Pan Yang was also getting anxious. This was not something he could take the blame for. He was just about to post his Weibo reply when he saw the rest of the comments that the examinees followed up with. Those comments left him laughing out loud. Peking University's Dean Pan? Don't listen to his nonsense. Damn it, who are you trying to bluff here? It's you for sure. Don't think that we don't know about it. These kind of wicked questions wouldn't have come from anyone else but you. Foot, Teacher Zhong, you're lying with a straight face. I'm suddenly very amused by this. Zhong Yi, do you even have any integrity left? It was you. Can't be anyone else. Don't try to shift the blame. Even if these questions get burned to ash, I will know where they originated from. In the end, not one of the examinees or netizens believed him. They all knew that Zhong Yi's mouth was totally unreliable. Zhong Yi had no other way out, so he simply went offline as he knew that if he couldn't appease them, then the better way was just to hide. This guy was intending to lie low for the moment since he had become the public enemy to so many people. At night. The farce was still ongoing. The Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board was also interviewed with regards to this year's examination questions, and a press release was published soon after. The press release exposed the names of the question setters of the most difficult questions in the various subjects' exams, and even revealed some details in regard to how a question should be written. This resulted in the Beijing examinees, and the observing netizens discovering with shock that the questions that had tormented the examinees in both the Chinese literature and mathematics tests were indeed written by none other than the goddamn Zhong Yi. That's right. Every question. Every question was set by him. At this moment, the examinees became so angry they cried out loudly in rage. Every injustice has its perpetrator. They once again launched their attack on Zhong Yi's Weibo with wave after wave of scolding. You still dare claim that the questions were not set by you? And even tried to accuse Dean Pan of being the one? I give in to you, Teacher Zhong. How could it be that all the crazy difficult questions were set by you? Chapter 713, The Average Scores of the Beijing Examinees are published. The next day. The storm was not over yet. The first thing he heard when he woke up and opened his eyes was the ringing of his cell phone. 
Zhong Yi was in a half-awake state when he answered the call, Hello, who is it? It's Pan Yang. It was the dean of Peking University School of Mathematical Sciences on the line. Zhong Yi suddenly felt more awake, and asked knowingly, Ha, Dean Pan, what's the matter for you to call so early in the morning? Pan Yang did not hold back. Why did you pull that shit on me yesterday? Zhong Yi played dumb. Ah? Did I? You claimed that the questions were set by me? Pan Yang asked. Zhong Yi said, What? What questions were set by you? Did I say that? I don't remember anymore. I was too tired yesterday, so I went to bed immediately after I got home. You rascal, still pretending to be innocent. He he, that's not it. After quibbling for a bit, the call ended and Zhong Yi was no longer feeling sleepy. He got up and went out of his bedroom only to see that his family had already gathered in the living room to watch the news. Chen Chen was sitting at the computer desk, fidgeting around, doing something. Dad, Mom, Zhong Yi greeted. His mother turned her head. You're up? I'll go prepare breakfast then. Sure. Thanks, Mom. Having said that, Zhong Yi turned to Chen Chen. What are you doing? Chen Chen did not turn to look at him and just replied, using the computer. Zhong Yi grunted, playing games again? No, Chen Chen said. Let me see. Zhong Yi walked up behind her and saw the interface of Weibo in the browser. When he saw that the entire screen was filled with the angry comments and scolding by the examinees and their parents, he couldn't help but sweat at this. Why are you looking at this so early in the morning? Chen Chen simply said, I want to know how everyone is scolding you. Zhong Yi nearly fainted. Why would you want to know that? Chen Chen said, it's fun. Zhong Yi. His father was amused by this as he sat there beside them. His mother said, you rascal, you deserved it. You could have just stayed at home in peace, yet you chose to go out there and get into trouble. Zhong Yi said depressed, you say it like it's such a simple situation. If I just stay at home all the time, where would I get my popularity? How could I boost my reputation that way? His mother rolled her eyes at him. Whoa, you're still talking about reputation. Do you even have any reputation left now? It's already turned into notoriety. When I went out to buy the groceries this morning, I bumped into our neighbors, little son, and sister Chen, at the market. They would usually chat with me for a bit whenever we see each other, or at least greet me. But today, it's like they pretended not to have seen me at all and just walked past me. I only found out later that little sons and sister Chen's children were taking their college entrance exams this year. Grandma Wang told me that little son's child went home after the exam and broke down crying. Look at the trouble you've caused me. I have to go over there to make a visit to clean up your mess. Zhong Yi blinked. Surely that's not necessary? The questions I set were definitely not easy, but they also weren't that difficult either. It shouldn't have been so difficult that it would cause them to cry, right? His father interrupted. Just watch the news for yourself later. You can't imagine how many people are crying because of this year's college entrance exam. The scoldings continued on the internet. If the examinees had just recounted from memory the mathematics exam questions yesterday, then as of today, the entire exam had been uploaded with all the answers included in it. Anyone could see it. It was only then that the netizens discovered that those questions they had seen yesterday were only for the multiple choice, or fill in the blank sections at the beginning part of the examination paper. The short answer questions at the end of the test were even crazier in difficulty. One of them required the examinees to solve a question that was at the university level using high school algebraic geometry knowledge. The attached ideal answer for this question took up more half the paper it was written on, leaving anyone who read it trembling. The examinees were in tears as they checked through the answers. I scored 50 points. I calculated mine and I only got 45 points. I'm so sad, I think mine is only about 40 to 45 points. There were a few multiple choice questions that I couldn't understand and guessed at, so I can't remember which options I chose for those. I did a little better, but I won't get higher than 70 points. Having analyzed the questions and answers today, I've realized that we were too careless during the exam. We totally underestimated that scammer Zhong Yi back then. 
many of the questions could still be solved and were within most of the examinee's level. But what is most wicked about Zhong Yi is that he totally tries to catch you off guard with the questions approach. The style of the questions are all done in a way that we have never come across before, so when we first read the questions on the exams yesterday, most of us were stunned by them. It happened to me as well and I was totally unprepared for it. It's useless to say anything now. I hereby announce I will officially join the John Yeast Lifetime Adversaries Organization. I will join too. A lifetime of adversary? I will be his adversary for at least two lifetimes. Three lifetimes for me. Ahem, don't be so harsh. Teacher John was just following orders. He's still a nice guy no matter what. Right, don't be too harsh on teacher John now. There were still a few netizens who were speaking up for Zhong Yi. In the end, an examinee from this year's college entrance exam posted a reply that left everyone laughing. It's not like I want to be so harsh on teacher Zhong, I really don't wish to do so. But among all the insanely difficult questions, if any one, just one question, was set by another teacher, then I wouldn't have said anything. I would understand and I could point my finger at the other question setter instead. All it needed was for a single question to not be set by him. But as it stands, they were all set by him. Every single question was his creation. So give us a reason not to be harsh on Zhong Yi. Just a single reason will do. If it were any other question setter, when faced with all these public opinions, they would have long since crumbled from the pressure and come forward to give an explanation to save their reputation. But Zhong Yi did not do so. He just went ahead with the most straightforward response, lie low. It was a good thing that this guy's mental strength was so strong. He had already gone through many similar situations where he was scolded by a lot of people at once, so it was just routine for him now. Perhaps that was also the same reason why the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board had approached him in the first place. The Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board were very committed to the reform of the college entrance examination this time, as they wanted to change the perception of their exam questions being too simple. That explained their determination but also explained why they needed someone to carry out this dirty job. They needed someone who could become the focused target of the backlash from the examinees and their parents, thus lessening the pressure focused on the board itself. But who could they find? Who would be the most suitable target? Among all the teachers at the university level, who was the most unafraid of getting scolded? Whose mental strength was the strongest? Who had the thickest skin of all? The board did not even need to think and made their decision immediately, recruit Zhong Yi. This fellow had already been through a hundred battles. His skin was amazingly thick. Even if the examinees and their parents did not scold him, there were still many other groups scolding him. Since he wasn't lacking in this area, it wouldn't matter much even if another group were to join in and scold him. So no matter how you looked at it, Zhong Yi was clearly the best candidate for this role. There was no one more suitable than he. That was probably why the board invited him to join them in the first place. However, at the very end, the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board might not have even expected that Zhong Yi would be able to write such, insanely difficult questions that it would bring the examinees to tears. This was something no one could have predicted. Later in the morning. At the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board. More than a dozen people had gathered here for a meeting. A female staff member said nervously, Leader, the scores for this year's math and Chinese literature tests might be a little bit low. Liu has already informed us to be prepared for it. The teachers who graded the papers have already given us some feedback. They told us that after marking more than 20 papers, no one scored higher than 100 points for the Chinese literature test yet. It's even worse for the math test. Among the 20 papers, not one scored above 70 points. The board's leader. The board's office supervisor. Finally, the second in command wiped his sweat away and said, for the reform this time, I think we might have tried a little too hard, it feels a little too harsh even. Could the tier 1 grade really not even be above 480 points? A staff member coughed and said, only over a few dozen papers have been graded. We still don't know about the rest of the papers after that. However, it's true that this year's questions were too difficult. Faced with the incredibly low scores of the examinees, the people on the board were also feeling a little guilty now. 
this was the first time they were doubting their decision in getting Zhong Yi to join them and wondered if it was a mistake. They felt they might really have gone too far this time. A few days later, the National College entrance examinations results were gradually released. The internet buzzed with activity. A Shandong province examinee, I checked it out. I scored 560 points. A Beihe province examinee announced excitedly, I got 530. It should be enough to qualify for tier 1. Ha 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 ha. A Jinsha examinee, I scored 510. I didn't do as well as I could have, but it should be enough to qualify me for tier 2. Why haven't they announced the grading yet? Hurry up. It's taking too long. 596 for me. Do you all think that I will become the top scholar of our province? Nonsense, I scored a point higher than you, what top scholar are you talking about? Hi, I only got 488. I'm in trouble this year. I got 601 points, higher than any of you. Many examinees from the different provinces were bragging about their scores actively online, except for one place. That place was where the Beijing examinees were from. Everyone began to notice. A. Why haven't any of the Beijing examinees talked about their scores yet? Beijing examinees, how did you guys do? Right, your exams made the headlines this year. How many points? Tell us quickly. The other provinces' examinees were all full of anticipation and curious. At this moment, a female Beijing examinee posted on Weibo, Are you sure you want to see? The netizens actively replied, Of course. All right then. The female Beijing examinee immediately posted her results slip online. When the netizens saw it, they were all dumbfounded. Chinese literature, 78 points. Mathematics, 25 points. Damn. Surely that's too low? Are you serious? 25 points for mathematics? This girl must be just average in her studies. Is there anyone else who scored higher? Another group of Beijing examinees gradually posted their results slips online. They were even the students from some of Beijing's key focus schools. A student from number 15 high school, my total score is 391 points. A Beijing normal university affiliated high school student, I only got 69 points on my Chinese literature test. A student from number 4 high school, my total score is 482 points. It's already considered high, but I only received 69 points on my math test. It's low as F asterisk asterisk K. Not even labeling it as going overboard on the scores would explain the situation properly. Very soon, the various provinces' average scores were tabulated and released. It was generally as follows, Shandong Province Chinese Literature Examination Average Score, 97 points. Jiangnan Province Chinese Literature Examination Average Score, 101 points. Jiangsu Province Mathematics Examination Average Score, 102 points. Liaodong Province Mathematics Examination Average Score, 99 points. But the average score everyone had their attention on for this tabulation was the Beijing Municipalities Examinees' average scores. For example, the English, Arts, and Science average scores of the Beijing examinees were still in line with the national average. But the Chinese Literature and Mathematics average scores, together with the weighted total score for the Beijing examinees were basically eyesores. Beijing Municipality Chinese Literature Examination Average Score, 72 points. Beijing Municipality Mathematics Examination Average Score, 59 points. When they saw the statistics, many of the netizens were stunned. Chapter 714, the National Higher Education Entrance Examination Board wants to invite Zhong Yi too? It was too low. It was way too low. Every year's college entrance examination, whether it be the provincial or the nationwide version of the exam, had always had different difficulty levels. Sometimes, a certain province might have it easier and sometimes more difficult. It was impossible to maintain the same difficulty level across the entire country. Therefore there would be a difference in the scores between each province's or municipality's zone. However, the scores usually did not differ by much and only came down to a difference of perhaps one or two points. For this year's Beijing exams, however, the Chinese literature examination's average score was lower than the national average by nearly 30 points. 
it was even more shocking for the mathematics exam where it was lower than the national average by a total of 40 points. When all the scores were combined, the total scores that the Beijing examinees got was lower than the national average by more than 70 points. These figures had truly shocked a lot of the netizens who saw it. Another group of people who were similarly shocked by this were the people from the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board, and their question setters. At the board's office. What the hell? This. There was nothing wrong with the tabulation of scores, right? Why don't we tabulate the data again? Many of the staff working at the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board were sucking in gasps of cold air due to the low scores. The data had been available to them earlier, and they were even the ones who were irresponsible for tabulating the data. But from the time they received the data until now, every one of the staff couldn't help but draw in a breath of cold air every time they saw these figures. It was terrible. It was really, really appalling to look at. If the media and industry insiders had analyzed this year's Beijing mathematics test to be the hardest in the history of the Beijing college entrance exam, then after seeing these statistics, they would have to modify their stance to place it as the most difficult in the history of the national college entrance exam. The mathematics exam had an average score of 59 points. The average of all the examinees was only 59 points. There had never before been an occurrence of such a low average for the mathematics test of the college entrance exam. This was an eye-opener for many of the veteran staff at the board's office. Such low scores were previously unheard of or seen before. Zhang Yi and dozens of other question setters had also arrived at the board's office today to join a meeting and discussion on some issues, but he was somehow caught in such a scenario. Su Na looked at Zhang Yi. Suddenly, everyone's focus turned to Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi gave an awkward cough, probably feeling a little embarrassed. Ahem, about that, in any case, the cutoff score will be adjusted lower, so there isn't really a difference and shouldn't affect the admissions. When he gave this excuse, even he was not totally convinced of it. To be honest, Zhang Yi himself did not expect the examinees to score this low either. There was silence. No one spoke as they let this awkward scene play out. Then Zhang Yi immediately said to Dean Pan, I'd already said that I didn't want to take this job at the beginning, yet you insisted that I do it. Hi. All of the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board office staff. Dean Pan nearly fainted at that. You rascal, pushing the blame onto me again, are you? A leader of the board didn't know whether to laugh or cry. He quickly mediated, it's already turned out like this, so even if the scores are low, so be it. At most, we will suffer a little loss of face, but it's really nothing much. Johnny immediately said, that's right, that's right. It's not even a big matter at all. We can definitely get through this. That leader of the Higher Education Entrance Examination Board nearly fainted at this response. He was just trying to mediate the situation so that everyone could take a step back, but it seemed like Zhang Yi was really good at latching onto the topic. But it was really as he said it. What's done was done, so what else could they do about it? All they needed to do was to just stick to the procedures and move on from there. Luckily, there was someone who got a perfect score on the math test, a board supervisor consoled. Zhang Yi's curiosity perked when he heard that. Someone got a perfect score? That person nodded. Just one. A girl. Zhang Yi was very curious about who it was. What's her name? That person said, Huang Lingling. Huang Lingling? It's her? Zhang Yi smiled, looking very pleased. He knew who this girl was. At the previous International Math Olympiad held at Summer Palace, Huang Lingling was a representative of the youth team for China, together with her brother, Huang Lei Lei. Zhang Yi got to know them both on that occasion and had spoken to them quite a bit. Huang Lingling had even mentioned that if she managed to qualify for Peking University, she would want to be a student of Zhang Yi so that he could personally teach her more about math. He didn't think at that time that she would be taking her college entrance exam this year. Soon after, the Beijing College Entrance Exam admission cutoff scores were released. Arts Subjects Tier 1 Grade Cutoff Score, 467. Science Subjects Tier 1 Grade Cutoff Score, 464. Art Subjects Tier 2 Grade Cutoff Score, 425. Science Subjects Tier 2 Grade Cutoff Score, 421. 
the cutoff scores for the entire admissions exercise had dropped drastically. It was so low that the scores were totally unheard of by many people. Immediately, the Beijing college entrance exams were once again the focal point of discussion in society. This time, not only Beijing Television and the other provincial satellite stations were reporting about it on their news programs, even Central TV Department 1's news simulcast reported about it that very night. Although Zhong Yi was also working at Central TV Department 1, but with the corporate structure rather bloated and the staff divided into many different departments, those who were involved in the variety shows had nothing in common with those program teams involved in the news. Even Zhong Yi who had been working at Central TV Department 1 for so many days now did not know which floor the new simulcast program team was situated at. That was why Central TV Department 1's news program reporting on the Beijing College entrance exam was not done so for Zhong Yi, nor was it out of respect for the Voices program team. It was purely because of the big commotion that the Beijing College entrance exams had caused. The Beijing exams exposure in the media skyrocketed even further. Zhong Yi's exposure rate also soared along with it. Overall, even though he had been scolded a lot, it was still not a bad thing for Zhong Yi as his reputation continued to rise every day. On Weibo. When the Beijing admissions cutoff scores were published, the condemning comments from the examinees also gradually lessened. I was scared to death, but luckily I managed to get a tier 1 score. I qualified for the tier 2s. Your sister. I initially thought that my low score of 430 in the science subjects would only have qualified me for a vocational college, but I never expected to manage to qualify for tier 2 instead. Everyone's scores are low, therefore the admissions cut-off grades were also adjusted accordingly. I was very lucky too. Somehow I got a tier 1 score. Good, good. From the results, it looks like I did pretty well this year. Usually, I only get tier 2 scores, but because of those wondrous questions this year, it somehow went my way instead, allowing me to realize my potential and getting myself a tier 1 score. Still, I feared for my future. Yeah, I would never want to come across questions like this again in the future. Reject drugs, stay away from Zhong Yi. Please send teacher Zhong as far away as possible. Don't let him come near us in case we get ruined again. I'm in 11th grade this year and will be taking my college entrance exam next year. To the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board, may I thank you first for getting rid of someone like Zhong Yi in advance. That guy is such a bastard. Please get rid of Zhong Yi. Seconded. Suddenly, a lot of 11th grade students from the other provinces started gloating at the Beijing students who were due to take their college entrance exam next year. He he. The Beijing college entrance exams had always been so easy all these years, so it's high time that you guys have it hard now. That kind of difficulty level shouldn't be too bad, right? Ha ha. Yeah, the wheel of fortune is always turning. It's finally your turn. Good luck to the Beijing examinees. Have a good one. Ha, I'll suggest to the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board to get Zhong Yi to set the questions every year. Since the schools in Beijing have so many resources and places for students, they should have to go through a tougher process. I'd be delighted to see that. Zhong Yi, beautifully done. There's still room to raise the difficulty of the questions. Teacher Zhong, work harder next year. Make it so difficult that they want to kill themselves. Right, please do that. I will be taking the national college entrance exams anyway, so there's nothing for me to be afraid of. Quite a lot of people were adding fuel to the fire. The Beijing examinees gnashed their teeth with hatred. But right at this moment, a piece of news was suddenly published online. It was a conversation between a reporter and the supervisor of the National College Entrance Examination Question Setting Team. The conversation was as follows, Reporter, Professor Nyo, the college entrance exam results are finally out. Professor Nyo, yes. Reporter, the Beijing exams this year have attracted all the attention. I've just received the latest update that says that the Beijing examinees only scored an average of around 50 on the math test, while the scores for the Chinese literature test were not much better either. Professor Nyo, I saw it too. Reporter, what are your views on this? There's an uproar of condemnation online about whether the Beijing exams were too harsh on the examinees. Professor Nyo, I've seen those comments online as well. 
Actually, my opinion is different from most of you. I think that the questions used in this year's Beijing exams were very good. It was something new and had a good level of difficulty. On top of that, it also achieved its basic function of evaluating the examinees and assigning them to their tiers. My comment on this is, the standard of the Beijing exams is very high, the question setter is also of a very high standard, and in terms of the reform steps needed to be taken for our exam standards, Beijing is leading at the forefront of this revolution. We have also discussed this before and would like to make some reforms on our side as well, so if it's at all possible, we would like for teacher Zhong to join us for next year's question setting task in the National College Entrance Exam. When they saw this news article, those 11th grade students who were just just making fun of the Beijing students earlier also turned green in the face. Suddenly, an explosion of reactions followed. The National Higher Education Entrance Examination Board also wants to invite Zhong Yi to join them. Goddammit, goddammit to your fifth great grandma. Don't, please don't. Oh brother, please don't joke like this, I have a weak heart. How did it turn out like this? Go f asterisk asterisk k your grandpa. Are they planning to send us all to our graves? Beijing was already a warning with the immediate damage it caused among the examinees, could it really happen to us next year? Your sister. I protest. I will be the first one to protest against this. That's too inhumane. Professor Nyo, don't mess around like this. Our old comrade Nyo, if you dare invite Zhong Yi to join the National Higher Education Entrance Examination Board next year. Do you think I won't head to your house to smash your windows with rocks? What kind of a grudge do you bear against those of us who are taking the National College Entrance Exams? Please get rid of Zhong Yi. Get rid of him. Woo woo woo. I don't want to see him either. It's over, we're definitely done for next year. Those who had been mocking the Beijing examinees some time earlier were dumbfounded at this moment. If the Beijing college entrance exams had implicated just a small percentage of the examinees, then the national college entrance exams which covered a lot more of the provinces and examinees would affect a great deal of people. This was something that countless 11th grade students who would be next year's examinees from the various provinces and municipalities would not agree to at all. When such a massive group of people came together online and exploded into protesting, voices, earth-shattering wails and howls could be heard. Don't, please don't. Teacher, I want to die. I suddenly feel like I'm screwed. In contrast, the Beijing examinees doubled over laughing at the turn of the tide. Ha 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 ha. Serves them right. They deserved it for taking us as a joke. Ayo, how hilarious. I'm dying from the joy. This is what they mean by, pride goes before the fall. You'll all have a chance to try out Zhong Yi's exams next year. Let's see if you all can still laugh when the time comes. Take care. The Jinx has gone to look for you guys. You're on your own. Good luck. Yet another commotion was beginning on the internet. Some people were crying, some were angrily scolding, some just joined in to observe the fun as it all devolved into chaos. Chapter 715, Meeting Wu Ziqing on the Weekend In the morning, the internet bustled with noise and controversy. However, Zhong Yi, the person at the center of the controversy, was still sleeping in at home. Probably tired from working too hard recently, Zhong Yi, who almost never snored, was snoring away. He didn't look too pretty sleeping there, hugging his blanket and drooling on his pillow unawares. The bedroom door opened. His mother walked in. Little Yi. Ah. Zhong Yi responded in a confused state of mind. His mother said, get up and go have your breakfast. Zhong Yi turned around and covered his head with the blanket. I'm not eating. I want to sleep. His mother said, I've already bought soy milk and fried breadsticks for breakfast. I'm not prepared to get up so early. I'm too tired. Wake me when lunch is ready, Zhong Yi said. His father overheard their conversation from outside the bedroom. Didn't you say yesterday that you would accompany your mother and go shopping during the day? It wasn't easy for you to get some days off, so stop sleeping already. Zhong Yi grumbled, Dad, I really can't get up, I'm too tired. Chen Chen also walked into the bedroom and glanced over at the bed. Zhong Yi, you're so lazy. His mother stared at him. 
See, even little Chen Chen is criticizing you. Don't you feel ashamed? Zhong Yi grunted, no matter who criticizes me, I will not get up. His mother said, hurry up and get up, breakfast is getting cold. I'm not eating. Zhong Yi drowsily remained lying down in bed. Mom, it's not that I don't want get up, but I really can't get up. This bro is so tired and aching all over that I intend to sleep until the afternoon. Even if the sky is falling, I won't get out of bed. With that, his droopy eyelids closed and he went back to sleep again. When his mother realized that he would not wake up, she helplessly prepared to leave his bedroom. At that same moment, Zhong Yi's cell phone beside the pillow started to ring. Zhong Yi woke up again and picked up his cell phone impatiently and answered, Who is it? A mature and gentle woman's voice at the other side replied, It's me. Oh, old Wu. It was Wu Ziqing. You're up already? Old Wu, are you still sleeping? Zhong Yi, yes, you don't have work today. Old Wu, I took the day off. Are you busy today? Zhong Yi, no, I've got nothing on. Old Wu, I've been thinking about how we haven't met in a long time. Since I have the next two days off, if you're not busy, do you want to come over to Big Sis's place? Or do you want to sleep a while longer? Another day maybe? Upon hearing this, Zhong Yi immediately sat up. I've had enough sleep. I'll be right there. After hanging up, he got out from his bed and said, Mom, Dad, I'm going to visit a friend. I'm leaving now. Mom. Dad. Chen Chen. The three of them were at a total loss for words. Didn't you say that even if the sky collapsed, you wouldn't get out of your bed? It was around eight in the morning. In the high-end district of Dauran Pavilion's East Gate. When Zhong Yi drove his car over, he found that the gates to Wu Ziqing's house were already open. He drove directly into the courtyard and parked it there instead of in the garage. He knew that Wu Ziqing had kept the gates open for him. When he got out of the car, Zhong Yi immediately spotted old Wu sitting near the flower beds in the yard. She was holding something and tilling the soil, appearing to be fiddling with the flowers. Wu Ziqing also looked at him at this moment. Their eyes met. How long had it been since he had last seen old Wu? Zhong Yi could not remember how long it had been anymore. He only knew that it had been a very long time, at least a month or two. When Wu Ziqing was newly appointed as the SARFT's deputy chief, she was too busy with work. After that, Zhong Yi had accepted the offer to work on a program at Central TV Department 1, and the question setting duty for the college entrance exam, leaving him too busy for other things. The two of them only kept in contact by texting or through phone calls since they basically had no time to meet up, so when he finally got to see Wu Ziqing again this time, Zhong Yi's heart thumped with excitement. He had missed her badly. Otherwise, he wouldn't have even gotten up from his bed immediately after just receiving a call from old Wu. Zhong Yi quickly walked over to her. What are you doing? Wu Ziqing smiled. I'm loosening the soil for the flowers. I was away on a business trip for the past week and had just returned to Beijing yesterday. It's been such a long time since I've taken care of them. Let me help you, Zhong Yi volunteered. Wu Ziqing said, don't dirty your hands. I'm just finishing up here. I've nothing else to do anyway. Zhong Yi picked up a forked stick from the ground and followed along, mimicking her loosening of the soil. At the same time, he also helped her to water the flowers. They chatted as they gardened. Old Wu said, I heard that many of the examinees are scolding you now. Zhong Yi said, are they? Old Wu looked at him. I think so. It was even published in the newspapers. Zhong Yi said, hi, don't talk about that. It's so unfair to me, and I don't even have a way to seek redress. The Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board came to find me and demanded a reform of the college entrance exam. They wanted the question setters to word the questions in the most difficult way possible. So when I heard that, sure, I'll make the questions then. But as it turned out, when the exams were done, the examinees started blaming it all on me. Why didn't they criticize the other question setters as well? Why didn't they scold the Beijing Higher Education Entrance Examination Board instead? Don't you think I've been wronged? Therefore, I'll simply not show my face for now and lie low for a few more days. 
After this issue passes, this bro will return as good as new again. Wu Zuching stood up and dusted the soil off her hands. All right, I'm done here. Go into the house and have a seat first, I'll tidy up the things outside. Oh right, there are some boxes on the sofa. Open them up and take a look. Zhong Yi asked curiously, what's in them? Wu Zuching smiled gently. I went shopping during my business trip and I bought two set of clothes for you. Try them on and see if they suit you. I think they will look nice on you. Zhong Yi chuckled. You're super busy, yet you still found time to buy clothes for me. Wu Zuching smiled and said, go on. Try them. Although Zhong Yi affectionately chided her, he was actually very happy inside. He went into the house and searched around on the first floor. He spotted the packaging on the sofa and unwrapped them one by one. After looking at the clothes, he immediately took them and went upstairs to try them on. He went downstairs. I changed. Zhong Yi showed off his new attire. Wu Zuching had finished tidying up the flower beds and had just returned to the house. Let me get a good look. After studying him thoroughly, she nodded slightly and beamed. You look pretty good. This color and style are quite suitable for you. Do they fit? Zhong Yi also liked the clothes a lot. Yep. That's good. Wu Zuching walked up to him and adjusted his collar a little. It's a bit crumpled here. Take it off later. I'll iron it for you. Okay. Zhong Yi also looked in the mirror. You have good taste indeed. I was getting worried recently that I would have no more clothes to wear. It's already been some months since I bought any new clothes. Old Wu said, you're quite frugal. Zhong Yi said, I'm not being frugal, it's just that I don't have the chance to buy clothes. Whenever I go to the mall, I get recognized easily so it's inconvenient to buy anything there. Unlike other celebrities, they have an agent and agency to help take care of their necessities and even have companies providing custom-made clothes for them. I don't have an agent, nor an agency. Although I have an office, Central TV is such a petty employer. Although they will prepare a wardrobe for the show, after the show ends, you have to sign for it and return it. If we do not sign or the clothes go missing, we still have to compensate them out of pocket. Wu Zuching looked at his reflection and said, next time you want to get some clothes, let me know and I'll help you get them. You are a public figure and associate professor now, so you definitely have to be particular about your clothing. When people look at you, they'd at least have to see you as a professor, right? Right. Have you eaten breakfast yet? Not yet, what about you? I just ate. There's still some kanji left. Do you want some? What type of kanji? Millet kanji. I'll take it. Do you want eggs? Yes, I want them sunny side up. Haha, <laughs> wait a while then. Sorry for the trouble, old Wu. It's no trouble. Zhong Yi wasn't modest, he treated her home as his own. He closed his eyes and leaned back on the sofa comfortably with his legs crossed while waiting for breakfast to be ready. Whenever he was with old Wu, she would never let him do any chores. In the past, Zhong Yi had in fact tried to argue for a bit, wanting to help her with the chores. But after that, he no longer insisted. Chapter 716, Zhong Yi's classroom is back. After breakfast. Old Wu, I'm full. Did you like it? It was really delicious. It's not like this bro is sucking up to you by saying that, but your culinary skills are truly excellent. Among all the people I've come across since childhood, your cooking tastes the best. I've never eaten anything so delicious before. I even had two or three bowls of the millet kanji. If I ate any more than that, my stomach would have burst apart. I'm so full now that I can't stuff myself any further. As long as you like eating it. That's for sure. Do whatever you need to do. Big sis will go and do the dishes now. Oh, do you have a notebook? Laptop you mean? Yes, it's upstairs in my bedroom's drawer. All right, I need to use it. Go ahead and get it from upstairs. Zhong Yi made himself at home and headed straight up to old Wu's bedroom. He found the laptop and brought it downstairs. He spotted a shady area in the front yard of the villa where there was a rocking chair. 
seeing that it was old Wu's garden and how it looked pretty nice out there, he headed outside and laid back on the rocking chair. He powered on the laptop and placed it on his lap, then got online. He also played some music to listen to by the by. Old Wu was washing the dishes while Zhong Yi admired her. There was a sense of harmony in the air. Sometimes, this was what a relationship should be like. There wasn't any earth-shattering, over-the-top excitement. Both people could just be doing their own things and not say a word to each other, but as long as they were together and could see each other, it was still something they could be very happy about and the relationship would still be as strong as any other. Old Wu was wearing a neat white shirt today. It was very simple, without any decorations or patterns on it. She was in a pair of coffee-colored slacks and her shirt was tucked in, secured with a thin belt. She looked very capable and experienced doing what she was doing. Her clothes did not get in the way of her scrubbing the bowls, nor did any water splash onto her. Just from this alone, it could be seen that she regularly did her own chores. Just thinking about how a great beauty like that was his girlfriend, all of the cells in his body were exploding with happiness. However he thought, she was beautiful. However he looked, he felt extremely pleasant. The so-called mood, defined actions. When a person was happy, anything they did wouldn't feel tough. Zhong Yi hummed along to the music from the laptop as he logged into Weibo. He posted, Good news. Good news. Zhong Yi's classroom is back. Zhong Yi had actually intended to lie low for several days and not appear anywhere for at least 10 to 15 days. However, as he was unable to suppress the good mood he was in today, he decided that he would just make an appearance. When he appeared, his Weibo suddenly became lively. That Zhong guy is here. You still dare appear? Capture the wild Zhong Yi. Scold him. Everyone, come and beat up this guy. Zhong Yi is planning on proposing another question. It's Zhong Yi's classroom again? Those elementary math questions from the previous time nearly made me vomit blood. What kinds of questions are you planning on this time? The key question is, what are the prizes? If the prizes aren't attractive enough, I won't be taking part. I would like to see just what sort of wondrous question you can come up with this time. Quite a lot of people had gathered around, including some of this year's college entrance examinees, Zhong Yi's fans, and some observing netizens, pushing the popularity of his Weibo up the charts. When Zhong Yi saw enough people observing his Weibo, he smiled and posted, the same rules apply. I will post several questions and prizes will be awarded for those who get them all correct. Because of this year's college entrance examinations Chinese literature and mathematics questions difficulty level, many of you have very strong negative opinions of me, so I have decided to increase the level of the prizes. Those who can correctly answer all the questions that I give will not only receive an autographed calligraphy piece from me, they will also be able to scold me face to face for 30 minutes. There's no limit to the amount of prize winners, but it's on a first come, first serve basis. Come and quickly join in. When he announced this, the netizens were all stirred up. Are you for real? Are you sure, teacher Zhong? Ha 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 ha. I must definitely join. Can we really scold you face to face? That would be great. Count me in. Everyone, let's answer this together. Everyone, come and join in. The more people we have, the stronger we get. If we can win this, then we will have a chance to scold Zhong Yi right to his face. Come on, give us the questions. Zhong Yi is totally underestimating us. After he presented those elementary math questions previously, I went through them many times and ascertained his style of question writing. Now that we're doing this again, I'm sure I'll definitely be able to answer all of them correctly. Everyone, let's do this. This opportunity might never come again. I've been waiting so long for this day to come. Everything was written out in black and white and with everyone as witness, let's not give Zhong Yi the chance to deny it when he loses. He he he, I've already taken screenshots for evidence. We must definitely let Zhong Yi have a taste of defeat this time. Word of this event spread like wildfire. In the blink of an eye, countless people had gathered here, especially those examinees from this year's Beijing College Entrance Exam. They were all gnashing their teeth, hating Zhong Yi. So when they saw this chance, they immediately put down whatever they were doing and charged over, each more high-spirited than the last, each roaring more than the last. 
When Zhong Yi saw all the excited netizens, he mustered up a laugh, this time, it won't be an elementary math question. The scope of these questions will be the same as the college entrance exam, except they won't distinguish between different subjects. Come on. Whatever you say. I can answer any question you give. Give the questions quickly. I'm getting impatient. There's nothing to be afraid of even if it's a college entrance exam question. We have so many examinees here. Even if I can't do it, there are still university students around. If they are unable to answer as well, there are still all the postgrads getting their master's or PhDs. If all of us unite, we can definitely bring down John Yi. Countless netizens were all gathered on Weibo, their eyes watching and waiting for the questions to be released. At this moment, Wu Ziqing finished washing the dishes and was walking out of the house. Are you chatting online? Zhong Yi raised his head and smiled at her. I'm holding an event, a question, an answer session with a chance at winning a prize. Let me see. Old Wu walked beside him. Zhong Yi slid over. Let's sit together? The chair wasn't exactly spacious, because how large could a rocking chair be? Old Wu looked down and did not reject the offer. She sat down next to him. Old Wu read all the posts on his Weibo. Are you seriously going to find some time to let the netizen scold you? Zhong Yi said, how is that possible? Then why did you say that? Old Wu said with a smile. Zhong Yi replied happily, the key here is that they must first be able to answer my questions correctly. Old Wu who was leaning back in the chair now suddenly had her interest perked. I want to see what kinds of questions you have prepared too. A number of people on Weibo were already pressing for the questions to be released faster. Quickly. Where did he go? Did teacher John run away because he got scared? Quickly post the questions. I'm getting anxious here. You've already promised us that we can get to scold you if we get everything correct. We're all witnesses here. Even if you run, it's no use. Teacher Zhong, you're definitely going to lose this time. Everyone was very excited. At this moment, Zhong Yi's Weibo updated. He posted the interesting questions from his previous world line by line onto Weibo. Chapter 717, Zhong Yi, you've really won. The questions were announced on Zhong Yi's Weibo. Question 1, Essay. The question was as follows, a young man is wandering around at the beach, looking glum. Why the long face, an old man asks. The young man explained that even though he had always done his best, in life and his work, he had never gotten recognized or respected. Watch carefully. The old man picked up a grain of sand and threw it away. Can you find that grain of sand? The young man smiled wryly and shook his head. I have here with me a pearl as well. The old man took out a huge pearl and weighed it in his hand, then proceeded to throw it onto the beach. Now, that won't be difficult to find, right? Become a pearl and no one will ignore you. The question was posted on Weibo, line by line. When many of the netizens read up to here, they smiled. This is too simple. This question is a very traditional one. This composition isn't bad. This is the first time I've read this story and while it looks very simple and straightforward, it carries a rather strong philosophy behind it. Even if this question had been included in the college entrance exam this year, it would have been very suitable. It allows for a very clear thought process so that the examinees can reflect and extend on it, as it focuses on the importance of self-worth and society's acknowledgement that could then be written as an essay. The essay can start off with the story of the sand grain and pearl, or from the importance of hard work and as the netizens commented and analyzed the question in all seriousness, the topic of the question was suddenly and unexpectedly revealed. If I become a pearl, no one would ignore me anymore? That made a lot of sense, as the young man thought about it for a moment. Then he picked up the pearl and ran off. Question requirement, please use the topic of, where should the most basic level of trust between people exist, to write an essay. There is no limitation to how the topic is used, but the essay must not be fewer than 800 words. At this line, all the netizens were dumbfounded. Holy f asterisk asterisk k. The most basic level of trust, between people? What kind of a twist is this? John Yi, I'm cursing your great-grandpa. 
Where did the self-worth and society's acknowledgement we were just talking about go? And the story of the grain of sand and pearl that somehow got cut short and became a mess. Why did he steal the pearl and run away? Does he need to have such low moral integrity? Your sister. After that long-ass introduction, the requirement of the question had nothing to do with it at all. John Yi, you cheat. Pfft. I'm cramping from laughing. Damn, we've been tricked by this passage again. When the question requirement was given, everyone immediately jumped up and started cursing colorfully. They'd witnessed wondrous questions before, but nothing as wondrous as this. Was this a Chinese literature question or a joke? I was still wondering why Zhong Yi would offer that prize so calmly. Yeah, this question is basically unanswerable. Who says it's unanswerable? I'll give it a try. Right, it's just asking for, where should the most basic level of trust between people exist? I'll write an essay. Some of the netizens charged forward, ready to give their answers. Come on, next question. Where's the second question? I won't believe that we can't answer your questions. That's right, we will settle it once and for all with this guy today. I'm getting so furious. At the Wu residence. On the lawn in the front yard. When Wu Ziqing saw the question Zhong Yi had typed onto his screen, she let out a laugh and then said, No wonder you're always getting a scolding from everyone else. Zhong Yi sniggered. That's how they show their love for me. Old Wu said, Is that so? Of course, Zhong Zhong Yi replied as his hands continued typing the next question. On Weibo. With the countless netizens waiting, the second question was revealed. Mathematics problem, 50 women are performing a square dance in a plaza. They are all spread out one meter apart from each other, with the speakers broadcasting at 170 dB. Xiaoming's house is situated on the seventh floor. The current wind speed is 3 meters per second. The netizens began analyzing the problem. It's time for a math question. Will it ask for the duration needed for the sound to travel? Or something else? 50 people spread out in a formation, one meter from each other? Hum, the decibel unit is a little troublesome, and there's even wind speed involved. If we ignore the acoustic resonance factor and transmission loss of power, then it won't be difficult to solve this problem. I've already started my calculations. It's quite simple. All I need to know now is what the problem is asking for. Then, within the next second, the question was revealed. Question, what is the probability of success should Xiaoming attempt to dump feces on the women in the plaza? Ah. The netizens all fainted all once. Dumping feces? Why would it be asking about dumping feces? I'll dump on your sister, Zhong Yi. What about the transmission of sound we were just talking about? Let me calm down for a moment, I feel a little lightheaded. How did this become a probability question? Hey Zhong, why do you never play according to the rules? Let me give this question a try. I don't believe I can't do it. Since the weight of the feces is unknown, as well as the throwing strength and speed, the women in the question are also gathered in a single location. When the feces are flung, their surface area will gradually change. Let us first establish the axes of the objects. If Xiaoming is on the z-axis, then the senior ladies will be on the xy axis. Next, we have to calculate the parabola of the flung object. Previous poster, you're awesome. Bro, we are all depending on you. Good luck. I think you can do it. Some science geek started doing the calculations. At this moment, Zhong Yi's third question was posted. Question, spring is the season for mating. At 6 p.m. Beijing time, on the day of the vernal equinox, police constable Xiaoli raised his head to the sky at a 38 degrees angle of elevation and saw the North Star. Afterwards, he led his team and rushed into an underground prostitution den to raid it. What are the most likely words that the John in the room would shout out when he realizes that this is a raid? 1. https colon double forward slash en dot wikipedia dot org forward slash wiki forward slash chunfen a. E D G E Shen R. 2. Oh my god, in Guangzhou dialect, B. Delay Lu Mao, 3. F asterisk asterisk K your mom, in Cantonese, C. Nong Xing Z essay with Macron, 4. What do you want, in Shanghainese, D. Cybel, 5.
mother of asterisk co in Korean, countless strings of what the f asterisk asterisk k were already flashing in front of the eyes netizens' eyes. What kind of a question is this? What the heck is this? Why does it even include the word cyborg? Who the hell would know what they would shout out? Who can solve this question? With that, John Yi followed up with his last question. Question 4. A BMW sedan with a power rating of 6.0 by 104 watts is traveling on a level highway when it comes to a braking stop 5 meters away from an old granny. The old granny's weight is known to be 50 kilograms. With the experience from the previous three questions, the netizens were wiser this time and did not assume the question's requirements before they were mentioned. Since they had fallen for Zhong Yi's tricks previously, they just patiently waited for Zhong Yi to finish and announce the full question. The question requirement was posted. Question requirements, 1, please state the power at which the old granny would fall to the ground at. 2, how much would the old granny demand as compensation? The netizens, at hash dollar percent carat and asterisk. Power of the fall? How can a fall still be measured by power? How much in compensation? Like hell I know how much the old granny would want for compensation. At this moment, many of the netizens and examinees felt that they had been too naive. When they first saw Zhong Yi announcing the prizes, they still came over excited, thinking that they would get a chance to scold Zhong Yi right to his face. However, when they gave it some thought now, they should have known what kind of a person Zhong Yi was. He was so wicked and sly, and the past experience would have told them that only Zhong Yi could give others a face smacking, not the other way around. Just looking at these questions, this fellow must have planned to not let them win from the very beginning. All of the questions were broken. I'm so angry that I could cry. How despicable. These questions are basically unsolvable. I was wondering why he would dare make such big claims. John Yi, come out. No one was having any of this. John Yi posted on Weibo, the questions have all been announced. Is there anyone who can answer them? I can relax my requirements a little. As long as someone can answer three out of the four questions correctly, I will pass him or her and award the prizes accordingly. That means that, other than the old granny demanding compensation question, as long as the other three questions are answered correctly, it is good enough for me. The netizens continued scolding. What the hell? Other than the essay which we can still write about, who could answer the other questions? These broken questions must not even have answers. The way I see it, you're just bullshitting us right now. That's right, this guy must have come up with the questions without thought. Even he couldn't answer them. That must be it. He even included something like Cybel? An EDGE Shinar? What has this question got to do with the information that was included at the beginning? If you're so capable, tell us the correct answer. Otherwise, stop bullshitting us. Right, this question must be unsolvable. John Yi is definitely trying to cheat us. John Yi, you're too wicked. During the college entrance exam, you cheated our examinees. Now that the exam is over, you're trying to cheat us? Down with this guy. This broken question can only be thought up by someone like you. Stop using your brain power. What John Yi's classroom? This is all just Zhong Yi making fun of us. The questions don't have answers, so let's not waste the effort to solve them. No one was trying to solve them anymore as all of them began scolding Zhong Yi on Weibo. After Zhong Yi waited for the longest time and no one came forward with an answer, he posted, Who says that I am making fun of you all? Since I can give the question, of course there is an answer. Does anyone still want to give them a try? The netizens found it both funny and annoying. Bullshit. What answers have you got? Ha ha. Teacher Zhong, you're. Then why don't you show us the answers? I still won't believe you. With the commotion becoming livelier, a lot of celebrities also came to observe. Yao Jian size Weibo, F asterisk asterisk K, how is this a college entrance exam question? This is obviously a joke. A female singer's Weibo, do these questions really have answers? It must be a scam, right? No one disagreed. They all believed that Zhong Yi was using the questions to tell a joke. However, a minute later, Zhong Yi followed up with a post with the answers in it. 
For example, the third question, in the guise of an absurd situation, there is a geographical question that is packaged very nicely into it. Why? First off, the John would likely utter something in his native language in the midst of his panic. As such, the objective of the question was to find out where he was located. Then just where is this prostitution den located? We know that the angle of elevation of the North Star is also the latitude of the location, so we can say that the location is situated on the 38th parallel north of the equator. By looking at the answer options, B, is De Lei Lu Mao which we clearly know it to be the dialect of Guangdong province. That location is situated somewhere around the 20th parallel north of the equator. We can safely exclude that answer because of that, while C is Nongxing ZSA with Macron which we know to be a dialect somewhere in Shanghai. Shanghai is based around the 31st parallel north of the equator, so that is clearly the wrong answer as well. Seeing the explanation by Zhong Yi regarding the answer, the netizens were all stunned. Holy F asterisk asterisk K. Holy shit. Zhong Yi continued, the answer comes down to A and D, E D G E Shan is a language from where? That is from the Shirangxi dialect, while Saibal is obviously from Korean. The problem now is that both Shirangxi and Korea are both located around the 38th parallel north of the equator, so we are unable to judge from the information we have on the latitude. Because of this, it won't be easy to solve, so what can we do? Well, there's still the longitude information. However, looking at the question, there is no such information given. What is given is that it is 6 p.m. Beijing time and the incident happened on the day of the vernal equinox. That given time was right during sunset in Beijing. Korea is located at the east of Beijing, so at 6 p.m., their skies are already dark while Shirangxi is located at the west of Beijing and for them, the sun has not set yet. When police constable Xiaoli raised his head, he could see the North Star. That would mean that it was no longer daytime, therefore the likelihood of the prostitution den being situated in Shirangxi can also be excluded. And with that, we arrive at the answer of D, Seibel. By the way, the usage of the police constable Xiaoli was just a red herring. Some of you might have excluded the possibility of the foreign option in the answers because of it, but remember that there are also people with the last name of Lee in Korea. The answer was revealed. The netizens fell into a dead silence. Yao Jintsai was stunned. That female singer was stunned. The examinees were stunned. John Yi, you've won. You've truly won. Chapter 718, A Hardworking Comic Faced with such an answer from John Yi, the netizens could only react with a F asterisk CK to express their feelings. I'm in the process of being dumbfounded. He actually solved it. Wow, you really had the answer. Awesome. I'm totally convinced. Foot, me too, I'm convinced as well. I face planted onto my keyboard because of laughing too much. Teacher Jong is indeed Teacher Jong. Even his way of teaching is unlike others. He is always so interesting and funny, even to the point of being wondrous. I thought he had invented those questions on the spot at the spur of the moment, but who knew that there were really answers to them? Just how bored did Teacher John get? He must have been really bored to have been able to come up with questions like that. On top of that, he could even come up with such a goddamn logical answer to such a far fetched question. I'm kneeling. John Yi, I'm also kneeling to you. Teacher Zhong, you're too strong. No one in the world can stop that comedic march of yours. The netizen with post number 679 is right, just how bored were you? The netizens fainted one by one. A few Peking University teachers had also appeared because of these questions. Dean Pan from the School of Mathematical Sciences on his Weibo. Su Na from the Chinese department on her Weibo. The Chinese department's director Chan Cage's Weibo. These questions were typed out by Zhong Yi spontaneously without the need to use the memory search capsules. It wasn't because his memory was so good that he had them all memorized from his time in the previous world. Rather, during his time at the online television station, while working on his show Zhong Yi's talk show, Zhong Yi had made use of the memory search capsules to retrieve all the memories in regards to Tonight 80's talk show, Mr. Ju Live Show. Bao Zhu Big News Events, and other similar talk shows. He had already locked down that batch of memories, therefore he could pull up all those questions without needing to think. 
The questions he threw out here today were all questions from his previous World's Baozu Big News events. If he had used them as the college entrance exam questions, there would definitely be some problems due to the impreciseness of the questions. But at the very least, it was enough for a good laugh that everyone could enjoy. On this matter, Zhong Yi's objective had been met. He only needed to be rigorous with regards to the college entrance exam questions, but now that the college entrance exam was over, if he still maintained that rigorous facade, then he was just going to bring more contempt upon himself. If he instead clowned around in an impromptu fashion, occasionally teasing others, it would help him improve his image a little and bring him back to being loved by the people. From the looks of it, it was working rather well. Teacher Zhong is still just as funny. Yeah, you're presenting a geography or physics question just like how you perform a crosstalk. I was one of those examinees tortured by Zhong Yi this year. The thing I hate most about him is that no matter how hard I try to hate him, I can't do it. Zhong Yi keeps adapting and keeps us laughing, so even if I want to scold him, I would be scolding him while laughing. Hi. I guess this is what Zhong Yi's individual style is, a hard-working comic. He includes his jokes in everything he says, in his shows, in his poems, and now even in his questions. I find myself liking Zhong Yi more and more. A comedic associate professor. Where there is Zhong Yi, there will not be a lack of doubt and scoldings, yet at the same time, there is also a lot of joy. He is truly the ideal entertainer of my heart. At this moment, some of the netizens started another commotion. What about the other questions? The answers to the other questions. That question with the flinging of feces, how do you solve that? However, just when Zhong Yi was about to announce the next question's answer, someone suddenly posted their own version of the answer in the comment section of Weibo. This answer immediately left everyone stunned, not because it was an exceptional answer, but because most of them couldn't understand what was written. X axis, Y axis, differentials, and functions were all squeezed into the formulas leaving people baffled but impressed by how amazing it looked. Damn, who is this person? Could someone really have solved it? Godly. Ha ha ha, how awesome. Has it been solved? Is the answer correct? When Zhong Yi saw it, he was also stunned for a moment, but then immediately gave it a like afterwards. Then, when he noticed the Weibo handle, he was stunned for another moment but recovered with a smile on his face as he came to a realization. That person's Weibo username was, Lingling P.O. Intuitively, Zhong Yi guessed that this person was probably Huang Lingling, the young girl he had met at Summer Palace during the International Math Olympiad. Then, Lingling P.O. sent Zhong Yi a private message, Teacher, did I get it correct? Zhong Yi immediately replied, Student Huang, you did well. Student Huang? Lingling P.O. immediately replied, with a horrified emoticon, how, how did you know that it was me? Teacher, you, still remember me? Zhong Yi sent her a smiley face, I guessed. As for whether I remember you, I am not that forgetful yet. Has your brother also taken his college entrance exam? Huang Lingling, he's taking it next year. Zhong Yi, I've seen your math exam. You got a perfect score. You did great. You were the only examinee to get a perfect score in math. No one else managed to. Huang Lingling, he he, thanks teacher, I will work even harder. Zhong Yi asked, where did you apply for your first choice? Huang Lingling replied without even thinking, Peking University, of course. My greatest goal is to become your student, but I don't know if I will qualify for the school since I didn't do too well on my other subjects. Zhong Yi, it's not going to be a problem. If you don't meet the admission cutoff score, come look for me. I will help arrange something for you. Huang Lingling replied surprised, Ah, really? Thank you, thank you, teacher. The tier 1 scores had already been released, but the cut-off scores for Peking and Tsinghua University still didn't have clear distinctions. Sometimes, even if your score was very high, you might not be admitted into Peking or Tsinghua University. In other words, this meant that even if your score was not high, you might still be able to get admitted into Peking or Tsinghua University. For the other higher institutes of education, the cut-off score boundaries were very straightforward. For example, if a specific score qualified you for Beijing Normal University, 
or a range between one score and another allowed you to qualify for Ranmin University. Then as long as the application for your intended university was within the top two choices, there would be an automated ranking to assign you to the institution you applied for. However, for institutions like Peking or Tsinghua University, they had greater freedom, fewer restrictions, and the authority to conduct their own admissions exercises. They even had special recruitment spots with more space to maneuver and overwrite the processes. For instance, in the case of an examinee qualifying with enough points for their first choice of Beijing Normal University, the second choice university couldn't steal this student for their own institution nor would they have the chance to do so. However, the authority Peking and Tsinghua University wielded allowed them to do so under the same set of circumstances as long as the examinees agreed to it. This was the special authority that the country's top two educational institutes had, and it was exactly as unreasonable as it sounds. After a short conversation with Huang Lingling and having chatted for a while with the other netizens, Zhong Yi successfully accomplished his mission of downplaying the scammer label the netizens had given to him and went offline. Chapter 719 An Independent Woman In the front yard of old Wu's house, Zhong Yi closed the browser. Wu Zicheng's smiling eyes left the screen. Those are the questions you gave? Ha! Huh. Zhong Yi looked at her. They're not bad, right? Old Wu nodded and said, they're quite good. Zhong Yi said, I still have a whole lot of such questions. Maybe when I'm in a better mood someday, I might hold another session like this. Even if it doesn't contribute much to my popularity compared to me filming TV shows, or writing some essays and poems, it could still gain me some fans. Do not look down on the smaller things. Old Wu laughed, a thief does not leave empty-handed. What are you saying, a thief does not leave empty-handed? Zhong Yi said, I had nothing to do anyway, might as well use the opportunity to entertain everyone. If I didn't do things like that, would my popularity have risen so quickly? I'm already going quite far up the list of the B-list celebrity rankings, so my goal now is to aim for the A-list celebrity rankings. I'll just try to flex my muscles a little more to see if that would be a viable goal, since the voice has already given me quite a significant increase in my fame. Old Wu smiled. If there's anything you need help with, just let me know. Zhong Yi gave a wave of his hands. I won't trouble you. Why are you still being so polite? Old Wu glanced at him. Zhong Yi sighed and explained, it's not like that. You're now the deputy chief of the SARFT and overseeing the entire entertainment circle, so all the more I can't receive any help from you. It will be difficult for you to answer to administration. And if anyone finds out, they might start talking behind your back too. Besides, I'm not in any trouble now anyways. As long as no one is deliberately trying to pull me down or ban me, I'll definitely be fine in the entertainment circle. Who can stop me? What he said was really reasonable. This guy was now famous for being a stubborn and unreasonable person in both the entertainment circle and education world. Old Wu smiled and said, I'm not afraid of people gossiping behind my back, nor will there be any gossips either. If there's anything you need help with, just tell me. Don't forget, you're my boyfriend now, right? Zhong Yi corrected her, not only now, I still will be in the future. Old Wu nodded. Yes, in the future as well. I like hearing that. Zhong Yi smiled. Okay, don't worry that I'll be too courteous to you. If I feel that there's anything I need your help with, I will surely let you know. But most of the time, I should be able to handle any problems on my own. There won't be a need for such a high-ranking official to show her authority. Besides, if those foes of mine from the entertainment circle know that you're my girlfriend, who would still want to challenge me? I wouldn't have anyone to entertain me at that time. Without them looking for a fight, I would be bored as hell. Don't you know that my popularity so far was all because of duking it out with those people? In the entertainment circle, the partners of the celebrities were always these few categories, one, business persons, tycoons, or wealthy women and affluent second generations. Two, fellow celebrities of similar fame. Three, industry outsiders, usually with some status or background. A majority of the partners of celebrities fell in those three categories. Even if there are exceptions, they are only in the small minority. However, for Zhong Yi to have found someone who was the leader of the SARFT, and not just a low-level leader,
but the deputy chief of the SARFT, that was basically an exception of exceptions in this case. If this news were leaked, probably no one would have believed it. Actually, even Zhong Yi found it unbelievable and felt like this was a dream when he gave it the occasional thought. Old Wu gently laughed. You're addicted to the fighting? It's not like that. They're always going against me, so how can I not fight back? It's not my style to just stay quiet. Zhong Yi said happily, that's why, as time passes, I even begin to feel uneasy if no industry peers scold me. It's like I'm asking for it, don't you think? It's all because of those people that I've become this way. It's common to have such ongoing feuds. It's also necessary. The show you came up with recently is very good. Old Wu said, I've watched the voice and heard the staff at the SARFT talking about it privately too. Many of them are watching this show right now and have very good things to say about it. Zhong Yi nodded in acknowledgement. Including all those poems, songs, stories, novels, and TV shows, this is by far my best work, and is also the most popular. Old Wu asked, what will you do when the voice ends? Zhong Yi replied, I've not thought of that yet. Maybe when the time comes I'll know better. Old Wu said, will it go straight to the second season? Zhong Yi said, that won't happen. The second season has to be at least a year later. If the time between the seasons is too short, the show's branding will be affected. That doesn't help its long-term development and sustainability. The two of them spent quite a long time just talking about their job problems. As Wu Zeqing was the head of the SARFT, she had insight into the most accurate news and data statistics of the entertainment industry. Naturally, Old Wu's general suggestions to Zhong Yi were also the most reliable. For example, the future policy's inclination for the variety show industry, or the current trend of the overall television show industry, all these information helped Zhong Yi gain a better understanding of this market. Even the information on some of the SARFT's major policies for the television industry which had not been implemented, yet was not held back from Zhong Yi by Old Wu. In the entire television industry, the number of people who could get information on unimplemented policies was probably only Zhong Yi, and only he alone could get such favorable treatment. As they said, a great tree would provide the best shade. The more he spent time with Old Wu, the more Zhong Yi realized he liked her. It was not because of the fact that Old Wu could help him, as Zhong Yi was never the type who liked receiving help. Whatever he did, he would usually only do whatever was within his means. Things he couldn't handle, he would just not take on. He hardly ever asked for help with problems. This was all down to his personality and habits. This was just the type of person he was. The thing he liked most about Old Wu was that no matter what he did, she would support him 100% as long as it did not deviate from her principles. She would also encourage him and use her more mature and experienced viewpoint to analyze and suggest advice to him. Not only did she help Zhong Yi a lot in his decision-making process, the more important factor was actually the psychological one. With a girlfriend who spared no effort in supporting him from behind, what more could he ask for? Old Wu might not know how to act spoiled, wasn't she the romantic type, and didn't play the little lady role. However, she was the kind of woman who would drag you back onto the correct path if you deviated from your original goals, lift you up when you were down, plant you back firmly on the ground should you get too proud, and encourage and support you on your way to success. She was someone you couldn't find anywhere else in the world even if you tried your hardest. Zhong Yi didn't know what he had done in his previous life to deserve such a woman who became his girlfriend. When all was said and done, a woman's inner beauty was still the most important. Does being beautiful make you any more useful? Would long legs help? What about large breasts? Zhong Yi pondered over this for a moment. All right, well, those are pretty important too. Chapter 720, Tsinghua and Peking University fight over the students. The next day. Sunday morning. In the guest room of Old Wu's house, Zhong Yi lay in bed sleeping, snoring loudly. Yesterday night, he had discussed with Old Wu many topics regarding calligraphy and even made a few pieces. When it got late, Zhong Yi decided to stay over, though he didn't intend to leave in the first place. It wasn't easy to have matched his schedule to Old Wu's days off, so Zhong Yi definitely wanted to spend more time with her. At 8 a.m. Are you up? Wu Zeqing came into the guest room from outside. When Zhong Yi heard her voice, he opened his eyes. 
Old Wu. Old Wu said, let's go downstairs and have something to eat. I've already prepared breakfast. What time is it now? Zhong Yi asked. Eight o'clock, Old Wu said, dressed in her nighty. It's only eight? Let me lie down a little longer. Zhong Yi drowsily stayed under the covers and yawned twice in succession. I don't know why I've been so tired for the past few days. Old Wu smiled. Then do you want to eat? Zhong Yi smacked his lips together. Of course. Why wouldn't I want to eat the food you've cooked? Old Wu said, then shall I bring them up to have in bed? Ari, that sounds great. Zhong Yi felt extremely pampered. If he were at his parents' house or the rented apartment and dared to make such a request, he would surely be given a good beating. However, at his girlfriend's house, Zhong Yi was clearly enjoying his days being treated like a young master, waited upon with great care. Soon after, Old Wu carried the tray into the room. Here, eat it while it's still warm. It won't be as good once it turns cold. She bent over and pulled aside a grandfather clock, then proceeded to place the tray on the bedside table beside Zhong Yi. When she did that, Old Wu's nighty drooped down at her chest and revealed something for a second. Zhong Yi did not purposely wait for this, but subconsciously turned his sight towards her nighty's neckline. He took in the view of a pair of jiggling white and a nude colored bra with dark undertones. Within a second, Old Wu stood straight up again and Zhong Yi couldn't see any more, leaving him itching for more. If only there wasn't a bra. Ari, just tell me, which bastard invented that lousy thing called a bra? What the hell was it good for? Where was the most basic level of trust between people? Have you eaten yet, old Wu? Not yet. Then let's eat together. Yes. Wu Ziqing pulled over a chair and sat beside him. Zhong Yi was sitting up on the bed, staying under the covers as he ate from the side of the bed. With every bite, he remarked on how good it was. He was full of praise for the breakfast old Wu had prepared, not flattering her, but rather because it was truly delicious. Old Wu's culinary skill was surely not just a level or two above his mother's. Staying at your place for two days has surely made this bro gain five kilos. Old Wu asked, you're not going to work today? Zhong Yi nodded. I have the next few days off. Peking University should be recruiting students soon. How was it this year? Are there many good students? Old Wu asked while slowly chewing her food. Zhong Yi took a pork with scallions bun Old Wu had steamed and said, the admission cutoff score for Peking University hasn't been announced yet, but they should have started the recruitment already. The top scorers should be quite difficult to recruit, so they must have taken preemptive action already but I'm not too sure about those details. I do not have a role at Peking University since I'm still suspended and haven't been back to the school yet. Old Wu said, regarding your suspension, I'll ask around for you later. Don't worry about that, Zhong Yi said indifferently. I'm fine with it as is, so just let nature take its course. Even if I were reinstated now, I might not have the time to go back to teaching. There's still enough things to keep me busy with on The Voice, and after that I have to think about the next show. After breakfast. Zhong Yi suddenly remembered something. Seeing that old Wu had gone downstairs to do the dishes, he took out his cell phone and made a call to Dean Pan of Peking University. Hello, Dean Pan? Has the admission cut-off grade been released yet? Dean Pan, it's not out yet, but it should be out any time now. There's probably going to be some fluctuation. What about it? Johnny laughed, it's like this. Do you know Huang Lingling? Huang Lingling? Dean Pan said, the examinee who had a perfect score on the Beijing math section? John Yi said, yes. That girl might not have done too well on her other subjects, and I'm afraid we might miss out on a good student if she doesn't qualify for Peking University. Dean Pan suddenly said, don't worry about that. She won't slip through the net. The student recruitment team has already gone to meet with the top scorers of the exam and Huang Lingling's name is also on that list. All right then, I understand. After hanging up, Zhong Yi got up from bed and went downstairs to look for old Wu to talk. Meanwhile, in the outside world, this year's student recruitment began and immediately spread like wildfire. Peking University's student recruitment team had been established early on. Like in previous years, 
Peking University had activated many student recruitment staff members and resources, and cast their net out to various key focus schools and the homes of the examinees. Most of the student recruitment teams were made up of female teachers and staff. It was still in line with the previous year's approach policy in which they would play the emotions card to appeal to the examinees. If and when necessary, they could promise the examinees scholarships and other preferential treatments. Su Na was a member of the Peking University student recruitment team this time. On this morning, she had come alone to a small district in Qingxi. She went upstairs to the apartment building and knocked on a door. The door opened, revealing a middle-aged woman who had come to answer it. Su Na gently smiled and said, You must be Auntie Song? That woman asked, You are? Su Na said, I am from the Peking University student recruitment team. I contacted you last night over the phone. Oh, your teacher Su, the woman spoke very politely. Su Na looked into the house and smiled. Is little Chen around? I would like to chat with him. The woman looked a little embarrassed. My son, he, some of the Tsinghua University teachers just came over to pick him up. Su Na was stunned. Didn't we make an appointment yesterday? The woman said apologetically, I'm so sorry, teacher Su. I wanted my son to wait for you as well, but the two recruitment teachers from Tsinghua University had arrived at my place at six in the morning. They insisted on taking my son away with them. It felt a little forced, but my son and I don't want to offend anyone, so. Su N A was flustered. Tsinghua. Elsewhere. Number 4 High School. Han Henian from Peking University's math department had just led his team here when he was stopped by the security guards, and two of the school's teachers at the gates. The security guard asked, what are you all doing here? Han Henian got out of the car. Hello, we're from the Peking University student recruitment team. We would like to speak to your students, Zhang Jipeng and Su Xiao, for a while. Could you please open the gates for us? The teachers from number four high school stared at them. It's our students' graduation ceremony today and we're having an assembly right now. You all can come back in the afternoon. A female staff member from the student recruitment team said, We'll just be having a quick chat with those two students and will not disrupt the graduation ceremony. We're doing this for the future of the students, aren't we? The number four high school teacher gave a wave of his hands impatiently. Not today, please go back. It didn't seem like their team could get through to this school's teachers. In the end, Han Henian and the others could only park their cars on the side of the road and wait there. The two students they wanted to meet today were the 6th and 11th place scorers of this year's Beijing College Entrance Examination. Peking University had already indicated that those two students must be recruited no matter what. Han Henian also had his eyes on the student named Zhang Jipeng as he was just five marks short of a perfect score in the mathematics exam. He was not only strong in math, all his other subject exams nearly scored full marks as well. That was the reason why Han Henian personally had come down today to see if he could persuade him to become their student. After waiting for quite a while, the security guards were still unwilling to let them in. Suddenly, a small sedan car drove over and stopped at the gate for a moment before being allowed to enter the school grounds. Han Henian and his team thought that this might be a car belonging to the school or a school teacher and thus did not pay much attention to it. But after around 15 minutes, when this car reappeared and drove out, one of the eagle-eyed female teachers suddenly let out a scream. It's Zhang Jipeng and Su Xiao. Ah. They've been taken away. Was that Tsinghua University's old shoe sitting in the passenger seat? Several members of the Peking University student recruitment team suddenly realized what was going on and immediately went up to the people from number four high school to ask, what's that about? Didn't you say that no one could enter because of the graduation ceremony? That teacher from number four high school plausibly retorted, the assembly is over, so they could enter. Han Henian raged. You. They finally understood, that the student recruitment team from Tsinghua University had colluded with some of the teachers from number four high school. They denied all entry to the Peking University student recruitment team so that they wouldn't have a chance to talk to the exam's top scorers. The same thing happened at Number 8 High School. A press conference was being held at Number 8 High School today because their school had produced a top scholar, along with five other students ranked within the top 100 scorers of this year's Beijing College Entrance exam. 
there was also a student who had defied all logic and scored full marks on the Beijing mathematics exam, the only one to do so in all of Beijing. Naturally, the press conference attracted a lot of people, such as newspaper reporters, people from TV stations, parents of examinees, as well as the student recruitment teams from Peking and Tsinghua University who were poised to attack. Once the press conference was over, for male teachers from the Tsinghua University student recruitment team rushed forward. One of those teachers was from this year's Beijing College Entrance Examinations Question Setting Team, the teacher who had a conflict with Zhang Yi and competed with him in a poetry contest, Liao Qi. Student Huang Lingling, we're from Tsinghua University. Student Zhu Zheng, let's have a chat. Our car is waiting outside and the Tsinghua University professors are already waiting for you at the school. Let's chat about your aspirations. Several of those top scorers were suddenly surrounded by the people from Tsinghua University student recruitment team. The Peking University student recruitment team had only sent three teachers, one in her 40s and two in their 20s. They were also all female teachers, so couldn't shove aside the Tsinghua team. They could only stand frozen on the outside of the crowd. A female teacher from Peking University said furiously, What are you guys trying to do? Huang Lingling and Zhu Zheng's first choice is our Peking University. What has it got to do with you people from Tsinghua? Tsinghua University's professor Liao Qi looked at her coldly. Everyone has a chance. Are there any rules that state that if they filled in Peking University as their first choice at the start that, they must definitely go to Peking University? We have to respect the examinee's choices. Having said that, they pulled both Huang Lingling and Zhu Zheng aside and walked out of the school. Make way, make way. While Huang Lingling was being pulled away, she said alarmed, IIVE already applied for Peking University. A Tsinghua University male teacher pointed at Liao Qi and said, that is Professor Liao from our institution. Professor Liao has come personally to pick you two up, so that clearly shows how sincere we are. Your filled-in intentions are not important for now. As long as you are willing to join Tsinghua University, we can accept you. Let's go. We'll chat once we're at Tsinghua University. There will be teachers there to explain to you too in detail. Huang Lingling anxiously said, I really don't want to go, I. The three female teachers from Peking University said in anger, is this even respecting the wishes of the examinees? When the reporters saw that the teachers from Peking University and Tsinghua University fighting, they all looked at each other with some surprise. They had not expected that this year's competition for the top scorers would be this intense. In previous years, the top two institutions in the country had always played the emotions card. It had always been so in recent years as well. No one had expected Tsinghua University to change to such a strong-arm tactic this year, totally foregoing the emotional side of things. They even mostly sent in their bigger and physically stronger male teachers for this specific reason to physically get the top scorers back to the university first above all else. This tactic caught the Peking University student recruitment teams off guard. The Peking University female teachers shouted, they are our students. Liao Qi stared coldly at them. Go away! The Peking University female teachers said, are you guys still being reasonable here? The male teachers of Tsinghua University did not bother with them and just continued pulling the students out of the crowd. The teachers of Number 8 High School were all dumbfounded. They did not know whether they should intervene in the situation or not, but they were totally helpless to do anything about the situation. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.